All right, hello, if anybody's out there. <laughs> Welcome to the live stream. Let me get the chat up here. All right, there we go. And we have the uh, audio here turned off. And looks like the lighting's actually pretty good for right now. Um, now, hopefully, with any luck, the uh, balancing that we had last week is, is turned off. So let's just see here. All right. Okay, looks like nobody's in yet, and that's totally fine. Um, we are gonna get started here. I'm gonna start uh, cutting the paper up that I need to, to cut up here. 3B, let's see what this does to the video. I don't like that. Try the studio lights here. And let's try to turn down the exposure. Hey, Kevin, how you doing? Uh, yeah, where are you watching from? YouTube? I will have to change that then. Thank you. I'll do that. I'll see if I can do that right now. I don't know if I'll be able to change this while uh, while I'm streaming. Or not. Okay. Uh, tr check it now for me on YouTube. See if it changed, if you wouldn't mind. Also, can you hear me? I'm hoping you can hear me. Ooh, Barnyard Commandos. <laughs> I haven't seen those in forever. That's awesome. Okay, thank you very much for the audio. But yeah, the uh, Barnyard Commandos, man, that's, that's some good stuff. I haven't seen them in forever. Anyway. I don't think I ever had any of those. Did you, did you ever have any of those? Like, did you actually own some? Because I, I did not. Let's do it on uh, this side for now. Three B should do it. Barnyard Commandos. <laughs> I'm trying to remember, I think that, I, I remember in my mind's eye, I, I see like a bull guy that was killing people. Not killing people really, but, you know, he was like a soldier type thing. Yeah, I hear you on that. I thought Barnard Commandos was actually a little bit even later than Ghostbusters and He-Man. Um, because I remember being into He-Man when I was in, like, uh, kindergarten and first grade was Ninja Turtles, definitely, and Ghostbusters and stuff. I thought Barnard Commandos was, like, way later. But I may be mistaken. <laughs> 
things tend to get confused up in the old uh, brain pan every now and again. All right, let me line this up so it looks good on the video. That should do it. And unfortunately, that's as far as I can zoom in. So hopefully you guys can uh, see it okay enough. And use the old blue painter's tape. Yeah, look how exciting it is to watch me work. <laughs> blue tape. This, this is the content that everybody tunes in for. There we go. Humanoid animal people that... Oh, yeah, yeah, That's, um... Oh, God damn. Uh, those... there. It's like Beast... Is it Beast Force? It's not Beast Wars. But I know what you're talking about. I used to love those things. They're a lot of fun. I still have one floating around here somewhere. It, the elemental thing always... Uh, it rubbed off. Like, you could put your finger to it and the heat would make it uh, do something. It would, like, show the symbol... But they were stickers, and they'd always fall off. Also because of the heat of your hands and the, you know, like, your natural, like, oils that appear on your fingers and stuff. So. But, yeah, what the heck was that called? I keep wanting to call it Beast Wars, but it's not. But, I, I man, I love those things. Yeah. What were those called? I want to, I'm going to look it up. Hmm, let's see. We're looking it up here now. Battle beasts. Battle beasts are what those things are called and they're they're awesome. All right. Well, time to get started here. Today, we're drawing from the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Uh, this was a request from a friend of mine. And uh, we are going to be drawing the scene when the missiles are turned into a pot of flowers and a whale. So, <laughs> it's going to be uh, going to be fun to do. So, that's good. Yeah, when the stickers fall off the Battle Beasts... But they're still cool animals, you know what I mean? They're still like cool uh, toys. So, you know, it, it's not the it's not the end of the world, you know what I mean? But yeah, I, I love all the different... Because they had like every animal that's ever been in existence ever was a battle beast. Like I had an antelope, I remember at one point. Like a, a flippin' antelope. And, uh, you know what, I gotta look it up. If there's a platypus, I gotta buy him immediately. Alright, I just wanted to confirm here real quick too. It is a bowl of petunias. That's what I thought, so. Very specific. I gotta get, I gotta figure out what the hell petunias look like. You'd think, I have some in front of my house, you'd think I'd know. But I don't. Okay. Got a picture of petunias up in front of me. Good stuff. So this will be a pretty easy drawing here to do. I'm just going to start off with the, the flower pot. And we're going to do the petunias up front and the whale in the back. And so just a simple flower pot to start. So how have you been, Kevin? You seem to be the only one in the chat here. So I'll ask you, how, how you been? How's things been going? I saw you were uh, you were out for a run the other day. That's awesome, man. 
Yeah, I know. I'm always disappointed that that poor whale died. D Douglas Adams, he's got uh, that bleak sense of humor. You know, there's a lot of like dark, dark humor that's that's in there. Which sometimes I'm okay with, but uh, sometimes I'm just like, oh, that's so sad. But I generally like the humor in the Hitchhiker's Guide. I think that it's, uh, I don't know, it's just cleverly written. Why was it a weird, why was it a weird con? Like, I've been to some cons, so I, I I wonder what makes it weird. Oh, I would assume if it's a very dedicated con, that it would be a little odd. Like, if it's focused on one thing. So, let's do some clouds here. Just in the back. Okay, and I believe too, I gotta look this up. I wanna see, I wanna make sure that it was a, I believe it was a sperm whale in Hitchhiker's Guide. And I gotta, I gotta make sure. Hello, Connor M. Halligan. How are you doing, man? How's it going today? We are just starting our Hitchhiker's uh, Guide to the Galaxy drawing here. And uh, we are drawing the scene with the uh, whale and the pot of petunias falling to the earth, uh, which is a lot of fun. So I'm just looking up to make sure uh, that I'm doing the correct whale because in the book they, they list it, a very specific whale. Okay, good, yes it was, good. All right, cool, yeah, I just wanted to make sure um, and then I've got to get a nice picture here of the side of a sperm whale. And I just typed in perm whale. <laughs> That'll be the next drawing. I do a whale with like an 80s style perm because that's hilarious to me. Okay, good. Got a nice sperm whale idea here. The poor thing. So let's see. They've got kind of a blunt head. And they've got that jaw that's along the bottom. We're going to do his poor little tail sticking up. So, uh, Connor, are you a Hitchhiker's Guide fan or a, uh, a drawing fan or, you know, stuff like that? Like, tell me, like, uh, tell me about yourself. If you want, no pressure either, too. Sorry, I, sh I should do that. I don't... I th I don't stream much, so if I'm terrible at this, please forgive me. So, uh, yeah, I was unsure what I was going to do today. This was a request uh, made by a friend, and uh, my wife seconded it. She said, you should do that today. So I said, all right, let's do it. Okay. And here we go, whale, we got his nice little fins there as he's falling. And sperm whales have teeth. Sperm whales are uh, the enemies of uh, giant squids in nature. They're, they're like uh, natural enemies. And the thing about it is uh, that nobody knew the giant squids actually existed for you know forever we'll do some clouds in front of the whale here so they'd find like sperm whales washed up or whatever and they would um they would have these like giant like almost look like they've been like whipped or you know something like that like these scars these horrible scars on them and uh, nobody knew what they'd sailors would say. Oh yeah, giant squid. And the scientific community would say, "There's no such thing. We have not proved it to be true." And then it came true. They they proved it. They found giant squids 
So that's kind of uh, kind of amazing, you know. All right, and so we got our pot of petunias here. We just got to refine them a little bit more. Okay. There we go, and chat is all the way down. Now I don't remember in the Hitchhiker's Guide if it specifically says what color of petunia they are either. Does anyone know that off the top of their head? The color of the petunias. Let me look that up too. <laughs> okay, I'm looking here just to see. I need to have the, uh, Get the book in front of me for this, you know. And then he's going to say, oh, no, not again. We're going to put that down here. Well, should we? What do you guys think? In the chat feel free to throw that in if you like should we put like a little thought bubble here oh no not again that the petunias is thinking or we should we just leave well enough alone and just have this be petunias and a whale falling and we can let whoever sees this drawing uh figure it out for themselves like maybe it'll be a little in joke you know what i mean anybody that sees this will be able to say uh We'll be able to say it's great. Oh wait, hold on one second here. Looks like my chat is not working because there's plenty of chat in YouTube, but none coming through Restream. Oh man, good stuff, man. I'm loving, I'm loving all the quirks here. So let me put this in the new browser window. Sorry if I didn't see what you guys were saying. Let me catch up. Hey, CJ Pro Create Art. How you doing, man? Good to see you. And uh, Connor, I'm, I'm back filling yours. You love drawing. You haven't read The Hitchhiker's Guide. Oh, you really should. It's a great, it's a great book. Um, I, I do. I love horror. Uh, it's one of my big things. Yeah, this is kind of not horror related necessarily. Sorry about that. But, uh, you know, I, I do lots of horror on the uh, YouTube channel. There's tons of videos. And uh, next week we'll probably be doing some like specific horror as well as I have a uh, slasher road trip series coming up. So stick around for that because we got some gore and all kind of fun stuff. So stay tuned. Um, yeah, Kevin, it is my second Hitchhikers. One of my earliest videos was a Hitchhikers, the Dolphins video. And CJ, let me see here. You know what? I actually think I actually think I'm not going to add it. I think I'm just going to let it be a nice little in joke for people that see it like a show. Some people know what it is. Other people's might not. So that that'll be cool. So sorry about the chat, guys. I think I got it squared away now. And uh, let's see. Okay. Yep. Yep. CJ, I just saw your latest message. So thank you. Great to be back. It looks awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. So let's get out the old eraser here and just give some erasing here. And this should be uh, pretty quick actually, because at this point we are honestly, we are ready to start uh, markering it in. So that's pretty nice. So 
Depending on how long this uh, this takes, maybe I'll be able to get uh, two of them done today, or at least we can get another one started once this one's done. Maybe we'll do some, uh, well, whatever you guys want. If you guys want to see some like horror stuff and monsters or whatever, we can do that. But let's bust through uh, this Hitchhiker's Guide first, and we can get to it. So if I can open my marker case here, because the zipper is stuck. There we go. All right, guys, what do you think? What color for the petunias? The background's going to be blue with the sperm whale kind of going to be, with the atmospheric perspective, it'll be bluish. So I'm thinking something that's going to contrast with that, either like a bright yellow or an orange or pink color. What do you guys think? And... You could draw me drawing monsters, CJ. <laughs> awesome. You could do my big old meat mallets here, like the big old hands. That sounds fun. And Kevin, have I watched Old Greg? What is what is Old Greg? I'm not uh, familiar with that. So I'm going to erase here. When you're dealing with like light and vibrant colors, like yellows, pink, stuff like that, they tend to pick up the uh, markers very well and it makes the colors look dirty so even if you guys can't see it I can uh, I can still see what's there so we're gonna do going once going twice going three times put your uh, vote for what color petunias we got pink yellow orange or we'll do kind of a bright purple hey gamer spirit how you doing man good to see you good to see you while we're doing that, I'm going to look for a nice shade of blue that we can start doing the background. This uh, blue 60, pale blue gray, is a very, uh, very light color. So it's uh, fun to work with. Go pink and purple. All right, pink and purple. Sounds good to me. Can do. I have a can do attitude with, with art. So pink and purple. Got some nice pinks and nice purples in here. Or am, I, am I a fan of Saw? You know what, uh, Connor? I went to see the first Saw movie in theaters when it came out. And I had a great time with it. I really enjoyed it. Um, actually, of, of the entire Saw series, I, I kind of like that one the best. Uh, the rest of them, I love the I love the inventiveness of the traps. Like if if I had a job in Hollywood, it would be designing traps for a Saw movie. I think that would be super fun. I can't say that I'm the biggest fan of the series. Like I'm not constantly rewatching the movies or anything like that. But you know, I I love the inventiveness and there's a lot of creativity that goes into that on screen. So. I guess, yeah, I'd say I like them enough. Yeah. Fan enough. How about yourself? And Gamer Spirit, yes, I'm glad you are enjoying Petunias. Petunias are good stuff, a good flower. The Petunias that we have or had, they died uh, recently. Um were uh they're from this like scandinavian company or german or something but they're like jet black petunias they were they're very goth and very cool but yeah cj yep i agree with you exactly on that the uh the the traps are what make it so let's just add in some some little dabbies here so i know where i'm going We'll do some going to into like orange stuff like that. So. Yeah, the first saw is the best, and uh, I love uh, I love Danny Glover, Mister. I'm not too old for this shit. Himself is in, in is in the first saw movie, which is which is great. Yeah, you know what I love? I got to say, guys, you know what I love about streaming? that I, in, in two streams, I've learned last time we drew Link from Zelda and we talked about Star Wars. This time I'm drawing a bowl of petunias and we're talking about Saw movies. So 
That's that's great. Uh, what would you guys say your favorite traps are in all of the Saw movies? Like, I don't know how many of you guys know the Saw movies, but uh, favorite traps in the series? What do you guys What do you guys got? I like. Uh, there's some of them that that I like that they're not even very visually impactful or anything. I just like the idea uh, or the simplicity. Like in Saw 2, that girl reaches into a box to get the uh, antidote. It's like a plexiglass box. And uh, th it's like these, um, it's like a Chinese finger trap made of like blades. You know what I mean? You'd reach your hands up into them and uh, you can't pull your hands out because the blades are just digging into your like wrists and stuff like that's so simple but it would work so effectively yeah the reverse bear trap grit trap is uh is a classic and yeah the brain surgery one. <laughs> oh, the needle pit <laughs> the needle pit that's a that's a classic gamer spirit do you, yeah, Saw's a little on the, uh, I would say, more the extreme side of the horror genre. A little bit. There is way worse, more extreme stuff out there. But, um, yeah, you should definitely watch more horror movies, man, for uh, for Halloween, Gamer Spirit. I'll put, out a, I'll put out a list. I was thinking about doing this earlier today of, like, my top movie picks for Halloween and stuff like that. I'll hook you up, man. I'll get you some good stuff. Yeah, that needle pit is fun. Where a... Uh, <laughs> doesn't he push her in? This guy, there's this pit of like used hypodermic needles and this girl gets pushed into it. So that's what we're talking about, Gamer Spirit, if you don't know. <laughs> so pleasant conversation. Good, good for like Sunday dinner conversation with the family. You know. It's on the stream, but if you're sitting down to like a, like a nice meatloaf with your family... And uh, the, the conversation lulls, you can just open up and be like, so grandma, have you seen Saw 2? The one where that girl gets pushed into a pit of hypodermic needles? Never fails, never fails. It'll get a good, good convo with the family going. Fun stuff. All right. So let's add in some nice rose pink here. Oh, final chapter, nice. And yeah, in hostel, that's that's pretty. That was pretty rough. That poor kid got uh, his tendons cut, his Achilles heels. I, I was just wondering too, like why didn't he feel that his Achilles tendons were cut? I mean, I have never had my Achilles, like my my tendons severed. That has not been part of my life's experience so far. But I'm wondering, uh, wouldn't you wouldn't you notice? I, I think I I think I would, but I don't know. Yeah, the the final chapter movie. I did, actually I did not know it came out tomorrow, so that's pretty cool. Um, the trailers look pretty decent. Like it looks like it would be fun to go and see. You know, let's add some yellow into these beautiful petunias. Yeah, the Hostel movies, the third one was like one of the dumbest movies I've ever seen. So just a hot tip for anybody watching. If somebody pours a bunch of cockroaches on your face, close your mouth. That's all I'm going to say. Just just close your mouth. Not that hard. It prevents cockroaches from crawling into your mouse. mouth. Mouth. Yeah. Oh, I hope you weren't talking about, Connor, I hope you weren't talking about the spoilers for Hostel 3. That, that's not a spoiler. That's not a spoiler. All right, let's get some green in. And I'm going to start with a very light green, and then we're going to darken it up in areas too to make it look kind of, uh, give the shadows. But for now, just a nice light green. This is gr yellow green 06, one of my personal favorites. Yellowish green. So 
So I assume you guys are talking about a Five Nights at Freddy's. Uh, is that a movie? A Five Nights at Freddy's movie? You guys talking about? And also, Gamer Spirit uh, Alien is one of my favorites. Uh, in terms of it, it, you know, it's a horror movie and a sci-fi movie, but it's got great design, like the art design, not just of the alien. But of like the space, uh, the ship, the helmets they wear, the, uh, you know, like all those little kind of things, the consoles on the ship, like all of that has great design to it. So it's a favorite of mine. Also written by uh, Dan O'Bannon, one of my favorite like uh, horror movie screenwriter type stuff. And yeah, I did fix the exposure and, and so it doesn't like automatically uh, mucky muck around, so... Hopefully the changes have helped a little bit. So thank you guys for pointing that out to me in the, in the last stream. I appreciate it. Let's move into green 07 Nile green here and just get a little bit of shadow going here and there. Not too much. Ridley Scott is the man. Yep. Well, that's cool, man. That's awesome. If your brother wants to watch it with you, that's like if it's one of his favorites and he wants to share, that's that's awesome. Go for it. Alien and then Aliens, the sequel, are amazing. I, I can't recommend them enough. And if you're into games, I really like uh, Alien Isolation as well. It's kind of a uh, sequel slash side story to the first movie, uh, which is great. I love those type of horror games where you're uh you're like powerless you know what i mean like in the game you can you can fight back a little bit but you can't kill the alien that's after you it's it's pretty cool you have to sneak all right let's see here yeah it's it's good stuff i i love that game i'm a i'm a fan i like games like that and um uh what the hell is it called like amnesia the dark descent and uh, I think it, I think Outlast is one that was kind of like that. I haven't played much of that, but those type of you're just kind of creeping around games. Let me scroll down here in the chat. Okay, there we go. Making sure I'm caught up. So I think for the uh, the face huggers, I know they're like, with the fingers. I love it. So I think uh, for the pot, um, I'm just gonna do like a like a standard orange kind of pot, like very simple. Uh, Among the sleep, I've heard that I, I've heard that name before. I know nothing about the game. I just know it's a game and it's a horror game. Uh, is it good? I'll have to check it out. I've uh, I love horror games. I've been playing. Um, Eternal Darkness Sanity's Requiem for GameCube. It's a Lovecraftian type game and it's uh it's really good. Great story. And it's not the best like game as it were. Like the gameplay itself isn't all that amazing. But uh it's a great it's a great game. Great atmosphere, great story and characters and it, it's just very cool and I love Lovecraftian stuff. <clears throat> and Connor asks, what's my favorite horror movie? Uh, whew, that's tough, Connor. Um, favorites for me? It, it's very hard because I love so many different things. Uh, but how about I give you like a, like a, kind of like a top list or something like that. How's that sound? Yeah, Gamer Spirit, I, I know you, I know you like Cthulhu. So, Yeah. Yeah, then then that goes back to too, Connor. I love uh, Lovecraftian horror is is what they call it. Um, so some of my favorite horror movies uh, would kind of be in that vein. Like I love John Carpenter's In the Mouth of Madness. Um, I am a huge sucker for uh, Friday the Thirteenth games, um, or not games. Sorry. Uh, Friday the 13th movies, I love that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, and like slashers, like uh, Nightmare on Elm Street and stuff like that. I, I'm a huge fan of. 
Um, I love... It, it's hard to even call them horror movies at this point, but the Universal Monsters type stuff, uh, Dracula, Frankenstein, the Wolfman, even into the 60s, I'm a huge Vincent Price guy, so like uh, I'm looking at my DVD rack as I'm talking to like Pit and the Pendulum and um, uh, not the Dunwich Horror, the, uh, the Haunted Palace, stuff like that. Hello, NNP Creations. How you doing today? How are you? Halloween, yep. Halloween is a, a great one. Michael Myers. I still I still have not seen, and I've really wanted to, is the uh, Halloween Part 6, uh, The Curse of Michael Myers. There is a producer's cut that's supposedly really flippin' weird. So I really want to see that. But yeah, so I, I love, t I love like, everything horror. <laughs> I don't know. There's not one that I can say is a is a favorite. And uh, the things I'm into, like I'm, I'm, you know, the things I'm into at the moment tend to change, like kind of like week to week, as it were, like what I'm specifically into. So, so I know that doesn't really answer your question. I'm sorry, but uh, yeah, I, I kind of love it all. How about you guys? What's everybody's like favorite like horror movies out there? Or like, what do what are you guys into? Like, do you like slashers or like uh, supernatural, like ghost stuff? I know people that are just Die Hard like uh, ghost fans, and not the not the Patrick Swayze movie Ghost, but like you know ghosts. Like uh, they love those Conjuring movies, which are excellent, by the way. Stuff like that, you know. There's something out there for everybody too, which I love, and that's that's another reason I love horror. It's a very diverse genre, you know. I don't think. Um, I don't think like romantic comedies or rom-coms have as much variety as like the horror genre, you know, but I'm no rom-com expert. If anybody out there that's watching is a rom-com expert, uh, let me know. Let me know what you think. Okay. Bro, okay. Sorry. The chat didn't scroll down. Birdemic gamer spirit. Good one. Uh, that's awesome. Um, let's see, NNP Creations, yep, good, I'm glad you're doing good, that's awesome. Uh, I'm naming all the best stuff out there, cool. Shining is a good one, Shining's a good one. Uh, Gamer Spirit, I have seen Birdemic 1 and 2, and like the actual movies before there was, uh, riff tracks of them, but I've also seen the riff tracks of them as well. So I, I love uh, I love crappy horror. Birdemic is kind of an amazing film, though. All right, so let's get out some ocean mist here. Doesn't that sound refreshing? Ocean mist for our whale. Yeah. This one's drying out. I got to make a huge uh, marker refill run here coming up for uh, Draw Halloween's coming up, and I'm doing that uh, slasher road trip series for Markers and Monsters. So uh, that'll be b before the end of September. I've got a couple of them done, like uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre and uh, um, uh, what the hell, Scream are completely done. But I, still, I've got more uh, slasher stuff I want to do. So that's uh, coming along. The Texas Chainsaw one I drew yesterday, and it is gory. It's super gory for uh, illustration that that I do here. So that's that's pretty awesome. All right, our sperm whale is looking looking good. Our petunia pot we're working on. Yeah, some of these markers are just drying out big time, which is no good. I watched uh, the movie in for the the serial or the slasher road trip. I watched the movie The Prowler last night. If anyone has seen The Prowler, it's it's a lot like the first Friday the 13th movie, except it's set in like Cape May, New Jersey with these beautiful big old Victorian houses. And it's like, uh, I think it's a sorority or like, I don't know if it's a sorority, but chicks in a dorm and they're being stalked by a killer who wears like a World War II uh, army outfit. And he kills with like a pitchfork and a bayonet and stuff like that. It's awesome. <laughs> the serial monsters in slasher style. Oh, that would be fun. I would love to do another uh, serial monster. I've been eating booberry like all week. 
Mm, 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 mm. And I haven't seen MTV Scream, Connor. Would you recommend it? Because I, I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure if it would be good or not. Um, so, yeah, let me know. Is, is it good? Is it worth a watch? Leatherface in Dead by Daylight. <laughs> oh, that Leatherface. What a, what a jokester. All right, get some of that removed. And now I gotta figure out a nice, like, cloudy sky color. I have this powder blue, which is nice. Yes, watch screen. Okay, cool, I will. Is it on, like, uh, Netflix or anything? Do you know yet? Ah, oh, Gamer Spirit, you were missing out, my friend. Booberry. Mmm. Mmm. So good. I... You know, I've been piping it up so much, there's no way that you're not disappointed after eating blueberry. But it, it does taste like vaguely blueberry-themed cardboard, but in the best way possible, like, if that makes any sense. Oh, it is on Netflix. Okay, cool. Thank you, CJ. I'll have to check that out. And Connor, thank you as well. Yeah, that's awesome. That's great. Cool, yeah, I've been kind of wanting to get into something, like, uh, to kind of binge. I've been, I, I watch a lot of sci-fi stuff, too, so I, I watch, like, Star Trek and that on there. But, yeah, that would be good to get into some, like, cool horror or a thriller. Now, do they, do they reveal, and don't spoil it necessarily here in the chat for other people that haven't seen it. But uh, I don't mind spoilers, I don't care. But um, do they reveal who the killer is by the end of the first season? Or is it a mystery that's, like, ongoing? Like, does it continue into the second season? Oh, and my marker fell apart. Oh, that's great. Uh, there we go. Okay, good stuff. Now there's blue on my whale. Hmm. Beauty. Okay, yeah, I gotta buy some new nibs, too. Grand. Hello, Cartoon Spirit. How are you doing? <laughs> yes, and more. Okay, cool. Cool, yeah, that sounds awesome. I'll have to check that out then. That sounds that sounds great. Now we got to figure out if we want a happy little cloud like in this region here. And I think we do. Yeah, we've got the gamer spirit and the cartoon spirit here. That's, my God, if, if we could get the movie spirit and something else too. I mean, my, my God, I think we'd hit critical mass. <laughs> So what was up with Leatherface? So I think it's just one of those things like uh, Kevin. I would I would think that it's like the whole nature versus nurture type thing. Like I don't think he was mentally uh, capable to begin with, but growing up in a family of like cannibals and killers, he just he had no idea that just killing people was wrong. You know. So I think that's I think that's what was up with Leatherface. Although I may be mistaken. Yeah, it's, it's, thank you, CJ. <laughs> if we can just if I can have a, a a bunch of spirits in the chat, that would make me feel just great inside. So anybody who wants to be a spirit, please do. Go for it. We can have the most confusing chat on on Twitch. That'll be my <laughs> that'll be my claim to fame, guys. This art business, pff, who cares? What I want is the most confusing, confusing chat on Twitch. Yeah, CJ, I'm kind of I'm kind of with you. 
No, no, Cartoon Spirit. The goal of the chat is that we... Well, confusing, yeah, but I, I just want to make somebody, like, nauseous at least once per chat. So that's good. Um, last week it was... Uh, we were talking about uh, incest, so that did it. So uh, we got to figure something out that's pretty gross this time around. So we'll get we'll get there. Don't force it. Let it all come naturally, everybody. Don't force the grossness. Just it'll it'll come naturally in conversation. That's how I've always found it in my life. But yeah, I, I always see him as a. I agree, CJ. I see him as a victim. And Connor, as far as Jigsaw goes, being a murderer. Yeah, I, I would admit that, because even though he's making people essentially kill themselves, they wouldn't have otherwise done it without his uh, intervention. So I would argue that he is the uh, he is the killer. It's kind of like uh, like Charles Manson never actually, well, they can't prove, but he never actually killed anybody. He's just in jail because he, you know, made other people do it for him. So I think he is a murderer, you know for having done so. But yeah, that's that's kind of a semantics. But yeah, I would argue that he is definitely a murderer. So, that's that's me. Oh my god, Gamer Spirit and Cartoon Spirit are one person. Gamer Spirit, I I don't I don't mean to uh, startle you, but are you sure it's not an evil twin? I I just I just want to make sure. I just want to make sure. You better check, man. Because those evil twins, if I've watched enough soap operas in my life to know, they can sneak up on you when you least expect it. And my blue looks like it's running out too, so that's awesome. <laughs> See, see, cartoon spirit. Yep, you might be a completely separate individual. I don't know. I can't. I can't prove it one way or the other. But I'm not willing to. I'm not willing to chance it. I am not willing to chance it. Not until I know for sure that you're two separate entities. <laughs> The mind plays tricks on you. Just like in a horror movie. This chat is a horror film. Debate amongst yourselves. Who will make it out alive? I am going to... I'm going to go ahead and say that I might make it out alive. Maybe. But but I'm, I'm just hoping there. I don't know for sure. Let's put some eggplant on this whale. Let's do that. Darken him up a little bit so he sticks out from the, the crowd. Mm -mm -mm. You'll stab everyone and make it out. Uh-oh. I've always wanted to play like a game where um, if you've ever played uh, Betrayal a House on the Hill where like one person becomes the traitor and like has to stop the other party. Well, I, I kind of want to play a game that's like that, but you you don't know who the traitor is in the beginning of the game. You know what I mean? Like someone's always sabotaging, but you're not sure you're not sure who. Like in the Friday the 13th, the new game, like, you know who Jason is right off the bat. You know, it's not like a mystery. It's like, okay, avoid, avoid Jason. But what if there was a game where you didn't know who the bad guy was? I wonder if that would be fun or if that would be very irritating. Let's fill this in with some yellow here. That's good. All right, so I know where the clouds are. Now you need to stream you going to get markers and supplies. <laughs> Considering I order them online, Kevin, that, uh, that, uh, 
<laughs> wouldn't be the best stream in the world. And okay, yeah, Gamer Spirit, yeah, no problem, man. Have fun editing. Good luck to you. If you can make it back, if you can make it back, please do. If not, no problem, man. Good to see you. Thank you for stopping by. Yeah, I think it would, I think it'd be tough, but, but fun, you know what I mean? <laughs> and Gamer Spirit's evil twin will not be back. Do you guys ever see Dead Ringers? Do you ever see that movie? It's a David Cronenberg flick, so that should tell you what you need to know. But uh, Jeremy Irons plays two, they're twin gynecologists. And they, but they live as one person. Like if one person is uh, out and about, the other person's like in the house. Like they pretend that they're one person. It's really freaky and weird, but it's a good one. And do I like Van Helsing? Um, so I have it. I actually have it on tape. I'm looking at it on my shelf right now. It's okay. Uh, I, I like the idea of it. I think that they went too much into the, like, CGI, like, action fest type deal that was popular at the time. But that being said, I like uh, I like Hugh Jackman. I love me some Kate Beckinsale, you know. So, it was, it was not all bad. But it's definitely not a favorite. It's not like I'm going to pop that in, like you know, once a week or think it's like a definitive type monster movie. It's just kind of a fun little popcorn flick. I remember being very excited for it when it came out because, uh, you know, Kate Beckinsale. But, uh, and you know, the, the monster stuff too, but being a little disappointed, maybe I went in with it with too much. For any first person shooter, when someone on your team decides to, <laughs> yeah, I can only imagine. I can only imagine. But then, then as soon as they open fire, you know who the killer is. Like, what if in the game, like you had a team of like there was like ten people, right? Like ten players, say, or or even like eight, and it was like, okay, we have to send people out, and it's like, <clears throat> pardon me, we have to send people out, and it's like two people have to go start the generator, which is across the the, the playing field or whatever and like two people have to go to this place and do this and like the only way you can the team can make it out is if they accomplish like all these missions but you know if somebody goes if like Frank goes with Dave and only Dave comes back and he's like I lost Frank I don't know where he is it's like well is, is Dave the killer is Frank the killer who knows and then you know things like that I, I think that would be I think that would be fun Maybe fun's not the right word, but interesting. Kate, Kate Beckinsale, Vampire Bride, right on. Right on. Love her in those Underworld movies, too. And I agree, CJ, I'm a huge classic monster guy. Uh, anytime they want to bring back the classics, I am, I am completely on board for that. Uh, I'm looking for a nice blue here to use. And I think this is going to be a little too blue, my my mint blue. Hmm. Yeah. I'm not feeling, I'm liking the kind of purplish and the greenish here. So I guess I'll just stick with this and just try to make it work. Yeah, Kate Beckinsale is, uh, yeah, definite. <laughs> But yeah, I love classic monsters, and I haven't seen The Mummy yet. It, it's out on Redbox, so I'm going to rent it hopefully this weekend and check it out here. Oh, that's cool. De I didn't know what you meant when you said Leatherface was in there last time. Dead by... Oh, yeah, no, I do know which one that is. The guy, he, like, hangs you on, like, a hook if he catches you or something like that. And there's a big spider thing. That comes down from above. I, I know what that is. You can set up bear traps and stuff. I haven't played that yet. Is that fun? I want to play that. And if Leatherface is in it, that's cool. Oh, 
Oh, that's cool. Yeah, Dead by Daylight. All right, guys, what are you thinking here of the uh, like the sky area? How are we how are we looking for that? I'm gonna start adding in some uh, little bits of color here and there into the clouds. But what do you think of like the the sky color in the in the background here? It's kind of greenish down here, goes to like a purple up there. And now we can start adding in little bits of like uh, cream colors and. Uh, um, cream colors and pinks and stuff like that into the clouds but just kind of want to keep it light and the resistance yeah I kind of I have played that once or twice I'm terrible at it Kevin I'm I'm the worst liar who has ever been like I have no poker face and uh, I'm terrible at it same with uh, like werewolf if you guys have ever played werewolf you know but uh, I'm terrible 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 at it Oh, I'm glad you like how it's coming along. But yeah, hard, hard's okay for a game. Like, I don't mind hard. You can always practice up and, and get better with something that, that's hard, you know? So I don't, I don't necessarily mind a hard game. As long as it's fun, you know? Yeah, games where I have to lie, I'm, I'm god-awful at. You know? I'm even a terrible, like, <laughs> I'm a terrible dungeon master in my D&D &D game. People will be like, you know, w was there treasure down that corridor? That, and did we just miss it? Did we not find the secret passageway? And I'll be like, no, there was no treasure down there. What, what, are, you, what are you talking about? And they're like, all right, we're going back to the damn hallway. We're searching for treasure. Terrible at it. Oh, that's cool. Lori Strode in the Haddonfield map. That's great. I watched, I finally saw Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. <laughs> the Rob Zombie Halloween movies. Have you, have you guys seen those? The Rob Zombie Halloween movies? It's, uh, it's, it's quite something. That's for sure. Got a little bit of pink in there and then just a tiny bit of cream. This might be a little too, that's too on the pink side. Maybe yellowish shade. Yeah, I like that. That's good. That sounds fun though, Dead, Dead by Daylight. I'll have to check that out, man. That's cool. It would be fun to explore Haddonfield. Yeah, it's not as good as the original, the Rob Zombies, but uh, it, it's at least interesting. Like, it's not just some lackluster remake that some studio put out for a cash grab. Like, it's at least I can, like, think, like, oh, what was Rob Zombie trying to do here? You know, stuff like that. So, at least it was interesting. But, yeah, definitely not as good as the originals that's for sure i watched i saw rob zombies 31 too i didn't much care for it <laughs> you know the mummy was pretty good really i'm i'm surprised i've heard i've heard a lot of negative things about it so cool yeah i was going to rent it this weekend and just you know, just for the hell of it. Because I, I don't want to see what they're trying to do with it. But I'm not expecting much. But, oh, that's cool. Thank you, NNP Creations. I'm going to call you NNP from now on, if that's okay with you. But thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's coming along. It's one of those, uh, it's getting there. Let's see if I have any light purple left in the, the bucket here. Let's just add some kind of a nice light purple into these clouds, you know. Nice delicate, delicate purple. 
Oh yeah, we forgot. Uh, I don't. I don't need uh, Bobby Ross sitting out here to be the the channel mascot anymore. From last week. Yeah, the mask was pretty cool from Halloween. Yeah, I, I like to see a movie for myself, but I, I always love to hear what other people think about it, you know? And it's not one of those that'll affect what I think about it. Everybody loves Star Wars Episode Eight, and I hate that movie. <laughs> so, I hear you on that. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely. Yeah, that's that's a good. That's what I'm gonna do this weekend. Watch watch the Mummy. Paola, is that is that better? Paola, whatever you want to be called, I will call you whatever. So if if you'd like to be called, I I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Paola. Did you really, CJ? I'm I'm glad I'm not the only one then. I just Star Wars has moved on. It is it is uh, it is not for me. And I, but I'm glad that I'm glad they're doing something with it that people seem to be loving. You know, for other for other people, that's good for Star Wars, man. Oh, you love the whale. Cool. We got petunias. We got a whale. We're having a good old time in here. We're talking about horror movies. And once again, Star Wars. And Kevin, yes, I saw those Bob Ross pops. I have already opened my pocketbook and just dumped out the money and the spider webs and the mothballs. <laughs> it just was like, take it. Take whatever is in there. Funko Pops. <laughs> I need to get the ones with the baby animals in them because baby animals. I love it. Okay, so we've got ourselves a sperm whale. We've got a pot of petunias. We've got some clouds. Ugh, prequels. Uh, well, CJ, you liked Star Wars prequels. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to ban you for life from the stream. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm an, I'm an OG Star Wars fan. OG or nothing. Let's get a little gray going in some of these shadow areas I think that'll look good as the clouds recede from our view yeah I'm, I am I don't know I, I love the original Star Wars so much that I, I think it just the way they decided to do the uh, the franchise and, and make it all about clone troopers and Obi-Wan Kenobi being young but not in a good way and stuff like that. Just it, it just wasn't for me. You know. But say la vie, you know. I know, Kevin, I know. Star Wars. See, you you're you're like the, you're holding on, man. Which is great. Keep doing it. I think that's I think that's good. But uh it's just I, I just can't do it, you know. I just can't do it. Maybe I'm too old and too cynical. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, if you say like you're a prequel trilogy fan, then uh, yeah, you you risk losing subscribers. <laughs> That's cool, man. Like what you like, hate what you hate. Well, don't hate what you hate, but don't like what you don't like. You know. Did you like episode eight, Kevin? I, I wasn't a fan. I still have to see Rogue One, but um, it was okay up until the point when they uh, murdered a childhood hero of mine for no discernible reason. So, 
Yay, episode eight. It was fine up until... It wasn't good, but it was fine. I could have gotten behind it if they didn't have a major character death that was dumb as hell. I could have even gotten behind the whole idea that, oh yeah, you know the happy ending at Return of the Jedi? Well, screw you. No more. It's gone. Everybody's a big old bag of sadness. You know... But, you know, that's cool. If, if you find, if you guys out there, like, like something and everybody else hates it and whatever, just, like, who gives a crap what everybody else thinks? You know what I mean? You gotta, you gotta like what you like. I like crappy horror movies and, and stuff like that. And people are like, how can you just watch this garbage? And it's like, I, I like it. I don't know. There's something about it that I find appealing and I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to continue enjoying watching them and all that kind of stuff. All right, so let me go grab my brush. I will be right back. All right, here we go. I was using these yesterday's. Yeah, that's my big pet peeve with with episode eight is is just that. Like, yeah, it was a remake essentially the the same plot line of uh, uh, the first Star Wars movie, A New Hope. But the fact that they killed off one of the major characters that was like unforgivable in my mind. And if that character comes back to life through some means then, you know what, sure. Like, I'll give it a chance, but... For me, it's like... It's just... It's 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 done in my mind, and you can't get that back. Like, you can't get that... Just the joy you felt for something back after it's been kind of, like, ruined. I'm never gonna say... I'm not gonna say can't. Oh, in episode 7? Yeah. Yeah. I do mean episode 7, sorry. But yeah, once it's gone, it, it's definitely hard to get it back. The the joy you felt for something. Yeah, I know Harrison Ford doesn't want to do it anymore, but it's one of those things where just don't have him in the movie. You know, he got his happy ending and just leave it at that, you know. That that's my theory. My wife says well, they kind of had to bring back, uh, you know, the original cast to get people that like the original Star Wars into it. And I'm like, no, no, you don't. Like, if they just had a Star Wars movie, the, uh, you know, continuity. All right, so we got inking started here. Sperm Whale is looking down at the big thing that's hurling towards him. Needs a name like, like, Ound, Round, Ground. Alright. And get his little whale flippers put in. Forced Ghost Han Solo. <laughs> Let's do his lower jaw here. The whale looks amazing, thank you. That's always, uh, the pressure's on now because it looks so good now, I could easily just completely screw it up in the next 20 seconds here. And then where would we be? So, gotta put in his teeth. There we go. Jason versus Michael Myers. Who would win? Okay, so good question, Connor. And I'm going to caveat that by saying um, we're going to talk about first regular Jason up to up through part four. 
And then we're going to go to Undead Zombie Jason, part six on, because they're very different Jasons. So uh, I would definitely say... I would say that the original Jason... I would say that Michael Myers... Movies one and two, he was another regular guy. He was just very evil. Okay. Him versus original Jason, I would say that original Jason might win. I feel that Jason has been out living in the woods for, uh, you know, however many decades on his own, slaughtering people for years. Michael gets out of a mental institution and goes on a killing spree. He doesn't have those murderer skills like Jason has developed. You know? So I'm going to go with original Jason versus original Michael. I'm giving it to original Jason. Now, if we get into uh, original Michael versus zombie Jason, zombie Jason, same reasons. If we get into Michael Myers when he is like that undead, or not undead, but he's like possessed by a evil Celtic demon spirit kind of thing from the later movies, he's definitely going to trounce original Jason. Zombie Jason, I don't know. I, I honestly, I honestly don't know. I think it might be a pretty even fight. Part of me would still give it to Zombie Jason. Yeah, the Cult of Thorn. Thank you. Thank you, CJ. So yeah, that's that's kind of where I'm that's kind of where I'm standing on that. Uh I think Jason would would beat Michael in a straight up fight. Now, yeah, that that cult of thorn, the the evil spirit Michael. I think he might take Jason. I think he's a lot stronger. But then Jason, he's an undead zombie. He's got a lot of life. Oh, uh, this is this is ink. This is just uh, I use this. It's Higgins. Black Magic India ink, and I love it. I always ink on top when I am done here uh, with the markers. I think it adds a nice definition to it. And that's where I'm at with that. So petunias, I hope I'm going to draw these suckers so they're looking petunia-y, you know what I mean? I'm no uh, Georgia O'Keeffe who drew like flowers and stuff. Like, very detailed, very big images of flowers. I, I'm, I'm, her, I am not. But hopefully we can make them look like petunias. At least petunia-y enough. <laughs> yeah, I would love to see a movie like that myself. Uh, I actually liked Freddy vs. Jason. That's another one I saw it in the theaters when it came out. And uh, I was actually, I, I really liked it, you know? I just had fun with it. it. It wasn't like some, you know, like a movie now they'd make it and it would be like this very serious thing. Like Batman versus Superman, Death of Fun. They would make that the uh, Freddy versus Jason. Freddy versus Jason and everybody's weeping because of the sadness and the drama. Just a fun movie. Alright. Do these do these look like petunias, everybody? <laughs> do they do these look petunia y enough for you guys? Is what I'm trying to say here. Let me know just how petunia y these are these are looking. And I will accept a meh, they're good enough. That works. Thank you, CJ. I appreciate it very much. <clears throat> All 
I love those versus movies. You know what? If the mummy's good, that would be cool to see. If they just have a, a kind of a fun monster mash type movie coming up where it's like the mummy versus Dracula or something, you know, something like that. That would be cool. Oh, hello, Blessed Parsley. How you doing today? And oh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. I try my best. <laughs> we have just laid down markers and we are inking on top. Thank you, Connor. Kevin, you're talking about Dr. Limus. L-I-M-U-S. Is that what you're saying? Or is it a capital I there? Imus. Oh, the mummy's not the only monster in the movie. Ooh. Well, color me intrigued. Which I assume is a shade of blue. I don't know. You know, that's cool. Is it? Uh, is it any of like the big ones? Like it's not like Frank or you know what? I don't mind spoilers. I have no problem with that. But I I think other people might. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say no spoilers unless everybody's cool with it. But uh, is it one of the big ones? Is it one of the? Uh, is it like Frankenstein or Dracula? Just just let me know if it's one of like the big we'll say the big the big five. It can't be the creature from the Black Lagoon. The world the world is not that good to me to make it the creature. I would have heard if it was the creature. I'm a huge creature from the Black Lagoon fan. Dr. Loomis, okay, from Halloween, thank you. Sorry, I got so confused there, and I should have just known that. Yeah, he, he can fire like 25 shots out of his little revolver. I would love a movie where, screw the monsters, I want the, like, the hero guys from various movies, but specifically the ones that give, like, big speeches to team up. Like, I'd love Dr. Loomis to team up with, like, uh, Quint from Jaws. <laughs> and they could give big dramatic speeches back and forth. That would be, that would be outstanding. Okay, cool. Yeah, text, text me. That's cool. The Gill Man. Yeah, I love the Gill Man. C CJ, I am uh, in my art room here. I have a big signed poster right where I look at every day of uh, the creature from the Black Lagoon and uh, the girl from the movie, Kay. And it's signed by uh, the actor who was Riku Browning. He was the creature from the Black Lagoon underwater in the underwater sequences. So it's signed by him and by Julia Adams, who played the girl in the movie. So it's it's awesome. I love looking at it like every day. Love the creature. Oh, okay. I'm checking my phone. Oh, really? Oh, Kevin, that's interesting. Oh, I'm gonna have to check that out. I'm gonna have to check that out then. Is that? Uh... Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> okay yeah you guys hear if you hear my phone going off in the background sorry i was in the middle of a inkscapade here i was really enjoying myself i'm like eh, i'll get the text in a sec but thank you i appreciate that yeah, it's a good poster. Uh, unfortunately, Riku... Well, he's still around, which is great. But unfortunately, he's the last like living universal monster... Like, monster actor. And we got a request from Blessed Parsley for Pennywise. Yeah, sure, I can... I'll, yeah. So what I said at the beginning of the stream is if I can get this finished up here relatively soon, I might uh, go into like another drawing for a little bit. And we got a lot of people requesting horror stuff. So, yeah, 
Maybe we'll maybe we'll be doing something like that. I uh, want to go see it in the theaters as well coming up here. I don't know if I'm going to have time this weekend to go and see it. I hear it's really good. That's my favorite of the Stephen King books that I've read. I have not read all of the books. That's that's for sure. See, I I do not have the uh the the fear of clowns thing. So Pennywise always just amused the hell out of me. Like Tim Curry, I would love for him to be my friend. Like when I was a kid. You know? <laughs> I was like, man, this guy he has balloon animals and that laugh. That it's hilarious. That sounds great. Is it really blessed parsley? That's great. I, I yeah, I've been hearing nothing but good things about it, so I definitely want to check it out. So, have you blessed the parsley? Have you seen the or the original like the mini series from the nineties? And if so, like how do the two movies uh, compare to one another? You know. Just that one clown? Yeah. That's cool. He is... It, it's a great... It, it is a magnificent performance from Tim Curry. In there. One of my... Tim Curry has so many performances that I love. Like, I love Tim Curry in just about anything. I hear you on that. Kevin, was it it's it's spiders, right? Is what you're thinking of? It, it's no secret. If that's what you're thinking, what what else was I bothered by as a child? Hmm. I'm trying to remember. Spiders. I hate spiders. I hate them so much. I mean, they're cool. They're cool, like little insects or arachnids. Like they're neat. I love drawing them. I think they're great in like horror movies. But man, I do not care for spiders. I tell you what. And yes, I would love to meet Tim Curry. He's still. He didn't die, did he? Really? Bill Skarsgård did a, that good a job? That's awesome. I hear that the kids did a terrific job in that movie, the new movie. And what, one of the kids is from Stranger Things, right? I love Stranger Things. Oh, my God. Is one of the kids one of the kids from Stranger Things? And if so, which kid from Stranger Things is which kid in It? I have a computer right in front of me and I could just IMDB it right now, but I'm going to ask you guys so I can continue drawing. <laughs> Ugh, Kevin, thank you for reminding me of that time a daddy long legs got in my mouth. <laughs> oh, God. Ugh, yep, there it is. There's that, there's that nauseous. There's the, there's the nausea. Oh, that's too bad about Tim Curry. Damn. I watch uh, Legend is a great fantasy film, and I watch uh, like Rocky Horror Picture Show usually once in October. You know, once a Halloween season, I'll throw Rocky Horror on because I, I like it. I, it's just fun. I like the soundtrack. You know. Okay, there we go. So we got our petunias and our whale done. Let's just add. You know what I'm gonna do? Because I don't want it to get too the the black ink gets a little too black takes away so i am going to finn wolfhart is he uh mike okay cool i love him i love him in stranger things so hang on here and 
Let me find it. Ultramarine blue. We're going to use blue ink here mixed with a little bit of black to get uh, for those clouds so they're not competing. And where the heck did that go? My dropper. Oh, I don't know where that went. I went for ink and I found my squirrel hair brush. So, yay. Looking for my eyedropper. Hold on. Not in there. Okay, so I don't know where the heck it went. That's disappointing. I'll just pour it. Usually I have an uh, eyedropper in there so I can kind of drop out the ink to mix it, but we're gonna have to do this the hard way. Mike from Stranger Things is in it, that's cool. Was Richie played by uh, Seth, uh, Seth Green in the original? Am I thinking of that correctly? I hope I'm thinking of that correctly. Okay. All right, so we've got some blue in there. And let's mix it up with a little tiny, we just need the tiniest drop of black in this blue. This black magic is great for mixing with other colors because it darkens it significantly. And it comes with a dropper. Come on, there we go. And you guys probably can't see, but as soon as that touched, it got... Uh, can see it mix so let's give it a stir that's still pretty black I almost put too much black in damn all right try it again mix a little water add in a little more of this blue come on Yeah, it that sounds good. Should go see that. In you go, blue. There we go. Alright, let's try that out. That black just immediately tones the uh the blue. Ah, there we go. That's a little better. A little tiny bit more black would be there we go. Darken it just a bit. Oh, you wrote a book. Blessed Parsley, what, what was your book about? Really, that's not a that's not a wig. Oh, my God. Tim Curry is a nut. I would have been more impressed if you said that he grew those horns for legend and that's not a prosthetic. Okay. There we go. Howl of the Werewolf. I love the name. A children's horror. Oh, that's cool. Now, are you a, uh, is it like a, a published book? Did you get it, did you self-publish? Did you get it published through a publisher? Or is it just like online or? That's pretty cool.
Good for you, Bless of Parsley. That's great. I hear you on that, CJ. Sort of like Goosebumps. Oh, that's cool. Like a, like a young adult kind of a thing. I'm a huge uh, Blessed Parsley. I'm a huge Goosebumps fan. I am uh, working on... Working on collecting the original 62? 64? I can never keep that straight. Good stuff. I love Goose... I want to reread all the Goosebumps books. Hey, Kevin, if you're still there, did you have any Goosebumps books? Were you into that? I don't ever remember us talking about it, because I think that was... Um, you know, in high school, we weren't into Goosebumps books. That's great. 62, thank you. Thank you both uh, CJ and Blessed Parsley. Do I want to do one of the covers? Uh, I mean, sure, we can work something out, you know. I will tell you that uh, being busy, it's going to put a damper on things. But uh, yeah, if you want to contact me or something afterwards, we can work out the details. I have no problem with that. And hopefully we can... Uh, figure something out here but thank you for asking I appreciate it sixty two goosebumps books so good my uh... I, I don't even know what my favorite goosebumps would be I can tell you I, I definitely love uh... all of the covers of the goosebumps books because I love that that style of art you know <laughs> Thank you, CJ. <laughs> I appreciate that. I don't know about I don't know about that, but but I appreciate you saying so. Okay. Blue is nice because it's not super dark. I didn't want it to compete with the uh, with that black. Your sister did the first cover. That's cool. Yeah, I, I Kevin, I figured that was uh, that was a little bit later than like when we were talking, at, you know, in high school, like we were reading Goosebumps books. I don't think back then in high school you would have been caught dead with a Goosebumps book at that age and, like, gotten out of high school alive, you know? The green slime. Yeah, that's Monster Blood 2. Werewolf of Fever Swamp, so good. So good. Jeff, who actually uh, gave me some of his old books, so I did a drawing for him, and there's a video of it. So if you're into Goosebumps, check it out. It was fun because I got to draw a whole bunch of the various Goosebumps monsters, like... Like the Haunted Mask and the Werewolf of Fever Swamp is in there. Good stuff. Good times. Yeah, Goosebumps books. I like getting things like that. Like those just little things. Like I go to the Half Price Books and they're like a buck or two bucks rolled Goosebump books. And they're... Um, it makes me super happy because it's like... It's like that nostalgic, that piece of your childhood, you know what I mean? It's like, oh, this is just nice to just look at and just like, yeah, that's that's cool. Yeah. The Goosebumps show is fun, too. 
Hey, hang on. I'll be right back. I got to get the... Uh, unless you want the stream to cut out, I got to grab the battery or the, the uh, AC adapter for the laptop. Hang on. Be right back. Okay, here we go. Plugging it in. I love uh, Jeremy Thatcher Dragon Egg Hatcher. That that's yeah, that takes me back. I think I've only read like one of those, Kevin. But the Goosebump Show was uh, awesome. I also really liked Are You Afraid of the Dark? If you guys have ever seen that show, that is a good one. Okay. So there we go. For that, and the last thing I want to do here is get the white paint pen and just do a little bit of speed lines which are fun just in white just to get the impression of motion there we go and then we're gonna do yeah, I have the first season, CJ. I need to get I need to get more. We do the whale fallen too. A couple little lines here and there. Okay. Good deal. That probably doesn't in blue for funsies. Kevin, I like the Goosebumps movie. Uh, it's on Netflix, and uh, I, I, I liked it. All right, Connor, we'll see you. This drawing just finished up. Thanks for sticking around, and uh, we'll see you. Colin, 17, baby. Woo. Yeah, check out the Goosebumps movie. It, it's actually really good. Uh, it... Uh, Caveat being, it's not like an Academy Award winning film, but it's just kind of fun to, you know, it's just like I would have loved it when I was like 13, you know. All right, gang, so that is our Hitchhiker's Guide drawing for the day. Um, I've still got 20 minutes left in the stream, so we can draw some more stuff. I don't know if I'm going to get another one finished, but we can definitely get one uh, rocking and rolling. So, what do you guys want to see? We talked about Pennywise the Dancing Clown earlier. Are, are you guys down with that? Do you guys want to see Pennywise? Do you want to see something else? Let me know in the chat, and I'll get another piece of paper ready to go here. And let me know what do you think of the uh, Hitchhiker's Guide picture. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba, where'd that other piece of paper go? All right. <laughs> I was like, "Wow, everybody's into uh, Pennywise," but blessed parsley, you're just you're just uh, you're just uh, what's sort of looking for? You you're 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 uh, bucking the odds here. Kevin, actually, all of my videos you should watch while eating monster cereal. If I'm drawing Sailor Moon, you should be eating Count Chocula while watching it. And I don't care if it's May, you know. That that's that's them's the rules. <laughs> all right, Pennywise the clown. Okay, yes, yeah, CJ's into it. Bless Parsley's into it. We're doing we're doing Pennywise. So now we got to figure out like. Uh, do we let me check here to make sure I'm square? How's that look? Okay, 
That's good. Tape it up. Now we got to figure out: Do we want to do the Tim Curry version? We do. We, do we want to do Bill Skarsgård? What do we want to do? I don't know. Decisions, decisions, folks. Decisions, decisions. All right, let me get a picture up here of Pennywise from both movies so I know what he looks like in both movies. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> I just love Tim Curry. Oh, that's good. I wonder, maybe we should have them together. Maybe we should, maybe we could do both of them. That might be a little complicated. Maybe they could be doing something together like, uh, I don't know, maybe they're partners on Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> I don't know. Well, do you like, do you like Frankenberry, Kevin, or Booberry? Fruity Yummy Mummy is my favorite, but you can't get that anymore, unfortunately. Um, let's see here. So they both have big, like, light bulb-shaped heads. Okay, yeah, Kevin, I like I like where you're at with that. They they have a balloon and they're holding hands oh god okay giving each other red balloons like maybe they're just enjoying like just being in each other's company and having balloons okay so in a little five by seven like this is gonna get tight so we're gonna do our best to get them both in here okay we're, we're gonna. I'm gonna do my best. So we're gonna do. I think what I'm gonna do, composition wise, I'm just thinking about it, is I'm gonna do Tim on this side and Bill over here. With dead kids behind a blessed party, I like it. I do. I I just worry that with with two people in a frame already this size, and they're they're going to be doing the balloon thing, it's going to get really tight. You know what I mean? Like I'm already I'm already like trying to figure out how I'm going to make them both fit in here without it about to look like they're about to like kiss each other. <laughs> like they're going to be very close, but. Uh, if I can fit dead if I can fit a dead child in that is my motto with all of my drawings if I can fit a dead child into it I will but uh, we'll, we'll see we'll see if we can get there you know if I can fit a dead child in this drawing I will fit a dead child in it that is that is the artist's oath you take when you finish uh, artist school. It's like the Hippocratic Oath for doctors, but it's for artists. <clears throat> so we're going to have... Um, we are going to have... Let's see here... Dead kid jokes, yeah. Yep, Kevin. <laughs> that's that's how we roll on this channel. It's it's dead children all the time. <laughs> uh, it's so not funny, dead kids. But it, I don't know. It kind of is. Dead children in the sewers. That's where dead children live. Okay. What does... I need a picture of Tim Curry's outfit. Oh, that... There we go. 
Okay, so he's got white gloves on. It's very... like white and purple. Which is surprising. I always imagine him as like yellow, you know. And it's striped here, like purple and green stripes. There we go. <laughs> okay. Good, good times. And then he's got the big puff balls here. So we're going to do that. Okay, let's get that good Tim Curry face going. Right? He's got a pointier chin than I thought. It's always interesting when, like, you, uh, I, I find, when you look stuff like this up online, like, what does Tim Curry from It look like? He always looks different in reality. Like, my mind makes him appear even more different, you know? I don't know if that makes any sense. And then he's got the big old red nose here. Because he's a clown. And clowns have red noses. It goes up. He's got the eyes here. And we don't want to make him look sinister here. He's just giving his buddy a balloon. And my guess is that if this video ever hits a big, Stephen King writes a story that somehow ties this scene into the Dark Tower. You know? Oh, are the clown sightings happening again? Oh, jeez. You know, where I grew up in, in Slickville, Pennsylvania, uh, you would not dress up as a clown and go freak people out because you would be shot. That's... <laughs> there There aren't clown sightings out that way because everybody's caring and nobody's afraid to shoot somebody that's doing something stupid. I like clowns. Okay, do I have the essential Tim Curryness of this clown? I don't know. I don't, I don't, I feel like I don't. And I'm not sure what to do to get it more Tim Currier, if that makes any sense. I know I need to put the wig on him. Yeah, CJ, CJ, I, 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 I definitely need more of an audience so I can't lose the audience I have. So please don't get yourself killed this Halloween, you know? I, I need to keep I need to keep my subscribers and, and people that chat with me. <laughs> Am I doing the sharp teeth? Uh Blessed Parsley, what do you want? Do you what do you think? Sharp teeth or regular teeth? What do you want? I'll do it. I'll do whatever. I think uh, I think that with the It movie coming out, that uh, clowns are going to be pretty popular. You know what I mean? Like if I was to do a Pennywise video for the show tomorrow, I think it would be I think it would be pretty popular. Maybe I will. I don't know. Hi, Georgie, we all float down here. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just not getting the Tim Curryness of this drawing. Not yet. It's it's there. 
if I had more time to fool with it, I, I could definitely get it. It's getting it's getting Tim Courier. It's getting Tim Courier, but not quite there. Yeah, CJ, I had seen that. People tying the red balloons in the sewers. And then he's got the balloons here. I'll get a ruler and rule them out later, the strings. But to start, we're going to just kind of just start throwing them in. Here, like that, here and there. More balloons. The more, the more, the better, I think. If I could get 99 luft balloons in here, I would. 99 zig luft balloons. Blessed Parsley, that's that's the exact time when you, you draw them again. You can't give up. That's just it. Like, even if this drawing comes out terrible, which which it might, it might, that's always a possibility, then uh, you got to go, yeah, you know what, Sharp Teeth, you're right. You got to do it again, and you do it again, and you do it again, and you do it again, and and that that's it. That that's that's art basically is just more and more and more. Yep, you always got to be doing more. Always got to be doing a little more. All right, let's see what he looks like here. What? All right, so that's good enough for now for Tim Curry. That's good enough for now. I'm going to start putting in the Bill Skarsgård over here. Yeah, CJ, drawing people is tough. But that's just it. You gotta, you gotta just keep press on and keep at it. And uh, I would say too, if you guys are like learning to draw, or you're, you know, well, everybody's like I'm still learning to draw, you know. But everybody's on that that path. But if you're if you're interested in art, I would say try doing a couple different styles too, you know, just so you can get used to just various things like. You know, I don't draw a lot of anime, but in the past I have drawn things anime style just to see what drawing that style is like. And you can learn things from different styles that will transfer into your current style, you know what I mean? So, yeah, I gotta just keep doing it. Keep, keep drawing, always. Like right now, we're gonna draw the Bill Skarsgård Pennywise, who's got a really big lower lip. Hmm. And a big old egg head. Now, does the new does the new it have a scene where he has sharp teeth? He's a, he's a, I, I will say this too. The new guy looks a lot more sinister. That's for sure. But does he have a scene where he has sharp teeth? You guys, you let me know. And those eyes are too big. Yep, mixing them up, good stuff. He does have sharp teeth. Hooray! Now, I'm not as familiar with this Pennywise, so 
this is going to be a little bit more of a, a challenge for me to do. But, uh, you know, I'm just looking at, like, reference photos here without having seen the movie to know, like, his character. But, yeah, he definitely looks sinister. And I need a better reference shot here of his smile. His beautiful smile. Good God, I wish I was thinking because I, I would have... I would have so tried to get Ronald McDonald somehow involved with this drawing. <laughs> that might be the next one. Ro Ronald McDonald. With Pennywise. Or I could just have, like, scenes from the movie, but with Ronald McDonald in them instead. Like, Ronald McDonald in a sewer grate. Uh, that has... Somebody has to have done that drawing already. Somebody has had... Somebody has to have done that. You know... Yeah, that's kind of, CJ, that's kind of what I was going for, that passing the torch kind of a deal. You know, not that I necessarily think, like, that's what's happening or whatever, but, uh, you know, just the, the, the gist of it, you know. This Pennywise looks like he'd be a fun guy, I think. You know, he looks like he'd get, he's down to party. Blessed Parsley, you gotta, you gotta, like I said before, man, keep, keep at it. Like, you know, drawing like this is, uh, and I don't even think I'm anything special necessarily, but. You know, drawing like this, it, it just, it takes practice. Like, anybody can, pr anybody can do it if you practice enough. You know? What does his scalp look like? There's a good scalp picture. Good. Uh, in this drawing I'm doing right now, I don't know if it's, if it's me that has done this. Like, I... Uh, I, I don't think I've drawn the new Pennywise well enough. But because to me, he looks like Doc Brown a little bit. Like I'm getting a definite Christopher uh, Lloyd vibe off of my little drawing here. So <laughs> I don't know if that's good or bad. I have no idea. And they made a video of Ronald McDonald in the sewers. Oh, man. That would have made a great drawing. Okay, so he's got the... Bill has the ruffles around here. Ruffles. And then he's got... Okay. Bill Skarsgård has the... Um... Oh, uh, what the heck is I'm talking about? The, the the ruffles that are around his, like, sleeves. Okay. He's got the sleeve ruffles. God, I wish I had some sleeve ruffles. Okay, let's see. And he's got gloves on too. But I need to be able to fit his hand in there. 
Okay, so what are you guys thinking of so far the draw? Like, does it look Bill Skarsgård enough? Does it look Tim Curry ish enough? You know, as it as it stands right now. More balloons. Let's just fill this top up with like all these balloons, you know. Does that look does that look cool to, to everybody? Or uh what what do you want to see? Like let me know what needs done here. I I think it's gonna be very, very hard to get some dead kids in the background of this. Okay, cool, 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 cool. And then um, the background. What should be in the background here? Like, because it, it's got to be very simple. What did it, what, what's in the background here? Like, I was, like, I could just do, a, like, a, a generic, like, blue background. Like, it's the sky kind of a deal. Or um, something like that. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Or a dark... I think the blue would go well because they both have orange hair and red balloons and a circus in the background. Ah, I like it. I just don't know how I would fit it in. So I could do something like, you know, there's the tent. But then the ground would have to be like here. It gets a little weird and squirrely. Yeah, you know what? Yeah. I was thinking the Storm Drain 2 Blessed Parsley. I Honestly, though, I'm thinking I'm just going to leave it a solid. Uh, Kevin, I think you're... I, I just think adding too much in is going to detract from the overall... Uh, the overall experience. Like, yeah. I, I just think it's going to detract too much. So we're going to keep it basic. And I think we're going to let the drawing of them and the balloon shine through. So I think that would be good. If I was going to do the storm drain or even a circus, I'd, I'd want to make that a feature from the start. So we'll just keep it basic. Keep it real, guys. Keep it real. And I just got a text message and was all excited. And it's like, you are out of data. Thank you for using Verizon. Good times. Good times. <sighs> mm. Okay, so I'm going to start with these red balloons. And I just want to erase a little bit of this uh, graphite. One of, the, one of the things is when I'm doing these videos, I'm using a 3B. So it shows up on the camera. Like it's a very soft lead, which means it's a, a dark lead. But that just means that it smears around and around, and I don't want to get the markers, like, the colors then become dirty within there. So as much as I can, I like to erase and just leave a little bit hanging out, you know. Let me put all the inking stuff aside here for a minute. Okay, and pull the markers back up. There we go. Oh, Chick fil A, good stuff, man. Waffle fries. Mm. So, we're going to start with a light rouge here. I actually love uh, Chick-fil-A's, um, their fruit and yogurt parfait is excellent, by the by. If you like uh, like fruit, which I love fruit, and, and yogurt, then Chick-fil-A actually has a really good uh, parfait, which is, which is great. Yeah, I could definitely I I could eat some I could eat some flippin' Chick-fil-A. <laughs> Let 
I'm not sure what I'm going to have for dinner tonight. Something delicious, I hope. I definitely really want to listen to 99 Red Balloons now as I'm drawing this because, well, I think that should be obvious, but it's like stuck in my head now. Chick a filler. So good. Nine and nine zig luft balloons. Okay, so then we're gonna move on to a lipstick orange here. Just give a little extra definition to these guys. I'm just going to make a vague, ill-defined light source coming from the general front area. That way I don't have to worry about whose face is in shadows and all that fun stuff. So let's go with this. This is Chinese orange. Which is a little more orange than I would have liked. That's okay. Too late now. Fix it in post. We'll go over it with some red. What do I got? Let's try, this is a Prismacolor. It's called Scarlet Lake. Let's give it a whirl. Yeah, okay, I can live with that. Who wins in a fight, Tim Curry Pennywise or Dr. Frankenfurter? Oh, man. Okay, so Dr. Frankenfurter is a, uh, what does he call himself? A, is he a transvestite or a transsexual? From the planet Transylvania, yeah. But he's a mad scientist, okay? Props, credit where it's due, that's great. Like, Pennywise is an ancient evil being from beyond the stars. Uh, so I'm kind of going to go, I'm, 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 I'm kind of going to lean towards Pennywise here. Although, you can defeat Pennywise by basically beating it with, like, confidence. Like, I believe the thing I'm using is going to work. And Dr. Frankenfurter is all confidence. So, if he can discover Pennywise's weakness, he might be able to beat it. I mean, he was beat up by seven kids. You know? I mean, that's that's lame. Like, when you go to the, like, evil clown afterlife, and they're like, well, how did you die? Or whatever. He's like, oh, I was, you know, I was ran through by a lynch mob armed with chainsaws or whatever. Or, yeah, my guys had to use, like, some ritual from ancient Mesopotamia to dispel my spirit. Uh, some kids sprayed me with an inhaler and then they hit me in the forehead with a rock. You know, that's... So, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm talking myself out of my own argument here. <laughs> I'm going to go with... I'm gonna, Kevin, I'm going to go with Pennywise. Again, ancient spider demon from beyond the stars. How about what do you guys think? Blessed Parsley, I'll float too. I will float because we all float down here. That's a good children's book right there. It's probably for young kids, but like, I'll float, you'll float, he'll float, she'll float. A children's guide to evil clowns. Children love clowns, I think. You know? Like, get a child and get a clown. They're going to have a great time. Get that clown to show up in their bedroom after they've been put to After they've been put to bed. <laughs> put to sleep. <laughs> after you put your child to sleep. Everybody's having fun. When clowns are involved... Nothing but good things happen. Uh, 
Okay, so that's coming along, balloons. There we go. It looks balloony enough for me, I think. They're not perfect, but very few things are. <clears throat> All right, good deal. So let's move on then to the Pennywises. And I think I'm gonna start with the hair. Now, Tim Curry's hair is significantly redder than the Bill Skarsgård hair, which is kind of an orange look. And I don't like that it just kind of T-bones here at the bottom. So let's erase that, because he's got kind of a, it's like sticking out like this way and in a circle. That's a little better. That's a little better. So let's add in the shadowed areas first. I don't think you can see Tim Curry's ears. I think the ears are completely hidden, right? I, I think they, I swear, I think they are. We're going with that. This is another Prismacolor. This is uh, Crimson Red. It's a very nice crimson color. I like it. The Prismacolors are, are actually pretty nice markers. Um, they last for a long time. They're not refillable, but good thing they last. Christopher Walken as Pennywise? Oh my god. That would be so good. I can't do a Christopher Walken impression. I wish I could, because I would. And you guys would just have to deal with it. But I can't do a good Chris Walken impression. This guy, he floats down. Yeah, I can't do it. I can't do it. Damn it. Just red, 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 all the live long day. And I'm going to do a little more red over here to catch the other side of his head. There we go. Red head, it's all good. All right, let's get that nose in. go that looks good all right and now we can move on to the uh william scars guard here and he's got more orange hair but definitely his uh his like lips and his face are dark do you guys like his teeth there or do you want me to do sharp teeth for the uh bill scars guard let me know He's got the darker red, I guess, lipstick. Was it? You like it how it is? Okay, Blessed Parsley. I'm down with that. I'm down with that. Another text here. Let's see. Hey, uh, no way, oh. I will listen to that later. <laughs> I will listen to that later. Kevin, so it's not picking up, so not everybody can hear it. Unless you want me to listen to that now. Because it, it is going to be loud. All right. Let me start putting in that dark. I can use this nice Chinese orange here on his hair, which will be good. 
Pennywise the Dancing Clown. Yeah, okay, I'm I'm getting I'm starting to get excited to see it. Especially after hearing how good it was. Cause I was a little I was a little iffy at first. You know what I mean? Like anytime there's a remake I'm a little like uh, I don't know about that. But the kid from Stranger Things is in it, the the new Pennywise is great apparently. I'm looking I'm starting to get pumped. Starting to get pumped. Okay, I gotta find, I have like very few oranges in my collection. So I gotta see what I got. And it looks like his hair kind of puffs up this way a little bit too. To do that that's okay uh, let's see what is this here that's carmine red oh we got orange that should, that should work I hope is that what it was a bad Christopher Walken impression Yeah, that's what I heard too. That's cool. I'm um, I'm looking forward to it. Do you guys, do you guys uh, read Stephen King out there, like uh, in in chat land? Are you guys like Stephen King uh, readers at all? If so, what have you read? What have you liked? I've read. I haven't read a ton of Stephen King, but I've read it. I've read uh, The Shining and Pet Cemetery and um, uh, Salem's Lot, which was great. Uh, I liked From a Buick 8 because it took place in Butler County, which is where I am. So that was cool. So. It's good stuff. It's, it, it is my favorite Stephen King novel. I, I read Cell when that first came out and didn't... It was just okay. Yes, yeah, Shining was excellent. Uh, Pet Cemetery was great. Um, oh, I read I read the sequel to The Shining. Doctor Sleep. I always forget that that's a, that's a thing. Yeah, Kevin, I heard the movie was terrible, too. I tried to... I got that out from the library when I was, like, 12 and tried to read it and just could not do it. And I haven't tried again since then. You know? Okay. Let's do just a little bit here. All right. I don't know about you guys, but the color definitely helped this feel more Bill Skarsgardy. Yeah, I wouldn't mind trying to read The Dark Tower. I know how it ends, though, and it's a little, like, meh. Like, I'm a little... I don't know if I want to invest the time knowing how it ends. Again, I'm not going to... For people that don't want it spoiled, but... And then again, reading the ending might be a little bit different than, you know... It might make a little more sense or be, I might be a little more okay with it, but um, from people that are big Stephen King fans, I even hear they're like, we hate the end. Everything's great except the ending. You know. Okay, so now I need to see what his... Okay, so he's got kind of a weird color. Let's go into our warm grays for the color of his, like sleeveys and stuff kind of dingy it's got white gloves on we gotta remember that okay so 
I think with his outfit, we're going to have to let the ink stand out a little more. Oh, and my eraser broke. Great. <laughs> Things are going swimmingly on the stream today. So good, so good. Let's warm one. Oh, that's almost too light. Almost. Almost. Hello, Gwen NNP. Yeah, I hear Audible's great. I read a ton, I gotta tell you. I read like four books at a time, usually. Three or four. I, I love reading. And I've gotten faster so I can read more. But I hear Audible's great. Like, I know people that swear by, they can listen to it, like, if they have a 40-minute commute, you know, you can get a book done in a couple of days that way, if you're listening both directions. And they have interesting, like, lectures on Audible and stuff like that, like, classroom lectures and, you know, there's nonfiction, all kind of stuff. go okay now problem seeing is that I'm gonna need to do around his hand area that's gonna be a pain and he's got fuzzy red um, fuzzy red buttons That wasn't so bad. There we go. What am I? What am I complaining about, guys? I tell you, I'm just a, I'm just a big old complainer. Yeah, Kevin, I would definitely suggest uh, either reading or listening to the audible, like the audio book. But Stephen King's It is uh, is really good. Really good. I, I highly recommend it. I think it might be like my favorite Stephen King uh, book. All right, now I need old Pennywise's outfit. Let's see. It's purple stripes on the sleeves and green and red. Oh, boy. Folks, they don't make this easy, do they? <laughs> I need a good shot. Oh, there's a good shot. Okay, so it's it's like green. And then it's bordered by... We're going to make it just look kind of all scraggly in here. No need to go too crazy. And then it's got, and I don't know if this is even going to show up when all's said and done, but then you got thin red lines on the borders. Of the sleeves. And then we got purple in between them. Like a satiny purple. Oh boy. I don't know how well it's going to come across as satiny, but uh, as long as we get the purple in, I think it'll be okay. We can add some white highlights in later. And so we are about a half hour over the chat time, the, uh, the time limit I set. If you guys are still cool to watch, I am still cool to draw. Just let me know. There we go. All right, let's see here. And then that same kind of color pattern. He's got red and yellow then. Like here. 
yellow. There we go. And he's got like a dark sparkly thing there too. Interesting. Bordered by red, and then we're going to use a dark blue in there, huh? So Tim Curry has like all the colors of the rainbow going on, and Bill Skarsgård is very super duper um, desaturated. He's all like shades of like white and gray. with just a hint of red here. I actually like it. I like them both and for different reasons, like both costumes for very different reasons. Oh, thank you, Blessed Parsley. I appreciate it, man. There we go. And I don't want this yellow to get too nutty. So we're just going to do a little bit like that, right down there. All right, let's see what we got going on here. He's got white fringe, and he's got the blue and the purple, and then another white up to his neck. So white fringe. Then I'm actually going to use this dark blue as the... Fringe shadow color. In there, if that makes sense. Like that, and then we're gonna go back to that, that green and that purple. And, uh, they use raspberry? Yeah. Razzleberry. Now, what color green did I use? I have no, I have no idea. Good, good job, Colin. Was it bright parrot green? It was not bright parrot green. Although that would work. What the hell? We'll do that. Bright parrot green. That sounds like a clown color. Good deal, okay. So now we get to the fun, and guys, this is great, of there's all this pencil lead on his face, and I have to shade a white face. <laughs> the fun, will it never end? Uh, let's add in his nice ruby lips, though. Get a little orange, then the red to the border. There we go. That's cool. All right, Kevin, you are down to watch. Yeah, I might as well finish this sucker up. You know what I mean? See, you guys were all thinking, I'm going to come watch the stream and get one marker drawing. Oh, no. You're getting two. <laughs> you, it, and you, you're all thinking, it's not Christmas. It's not my birthday. Can you tell that as the stream goes on longer, my mind erodes more? Because that's, <laughs> that's how I feel. I start to be like, I'm not sure what to say. My brain just starts going, and then craziness comes out. Okay, so I know he has yellow teeth. We're going to use lightning yellow for the teeth. Thank you, Kevin. I appreciate it. 
And then inside the mouth, we're going to go with a cool gray. And a lot of that's going to be inked anyway, so don't worry about the teeth there yet. They're not, they're not pointy. They will be when we put it inked. And thank you, Blessed Parsley. I appreciate it. Hey, what color, when he has the evil eyes, or the evil teeth, what color do his eyes turn? What color does Pennywise's eyes turn when he's got the evil, uh, you know, when he's got the teeth? Are they like yellow eyes? I think, yeah, okay, cool, cool. Alright, now his white gloves. Stay to the end of the stream and a section pick a second picture is your reward. There you go, perfect. You guys, you're like you're like my long haul truckers here. You're in it. You're in it the whole way, man. You're going from uh, Frisco to Portland, Maine. <laughs> I, uh, I have lost my goddamn mind. So, good stuff. Okay, sure, Blessed Parsley. I, I really do think it's yellow, but I'd like to, I, I like to get, if I can get the minor details correct, I, I like to, because especially in the age with the, you know, the internets, uh, why wouldn't you try for that? So now I can do uh, Bill Skarsgård's hand. Like a so. And that's a cool gray number three we used. I'm going to use a warm gray again for his, uh, the rest of his costume back here. Let's erase these so they don't get dirty. And I'm going to use a warm gray number two. A shining pick. I'd, I'd love to do the twins. Kevin, I think that's a good idea. Part of the problem is um, there's so many things I want to do. There's so many things I like, I, I love and want to do. So it's hard to get to all of them. But I would definitely love to do a shining pick. And I definitely need to uh, pick up that the, the new shining Funko Pop if you guys have seen that. The Jack Torrance Funko Pop, it's great. And yellowish orange, thank you, Blessed Parsley. So I think we're going to start with a yellow for the eyes then. And I can add in just a hint of orange here on the sides. I know, right? I want that I want that Chase Jack so bad. So bad. I just I those Funko, those damn Funko Pops. I, I didn't buy them for so long because I knew I'd get addicted and now I'm addicted, you know. But I, I want the uh, New York Comic Con um the first doctor. I love Doctor Who. And I love the first doctor as well. So I really want that first Doctor chase. It's like, damn, all these things I want. Damn them for making them, um, for making them so, like, desirable and then saying, like, nope, you can't have them, not unless you go to this special place. It's like, damn it. 
Yeah, him at the bar would be great. Or him, um, this is going to sound insane, but him in the bathroom, you know? That red bathroom. Two grand. Oh, but I bet you have some awesome stuff. You got that uh, World War II Captain America. I wasn't able, ever able to get him. That's awesome, man. It's like my Lego minifigures are like that. They're they're just beyond nuts. Yeah, the only my only problem with the flocked ones is I worry that they would be very hard to uh, cuz I take them out of their box and and have them on my shelf. Like I, I like to I like to just have them out. You know, and I, I think the flocking would get a little funky after a while, like dusty. See, I didn't know that about the New York Comic Con. I know the, the San Diego or San Francisco or San Diego. Yeah, San Diego Comic Con ones were because I got the Stranger Things ones because I'm a huge fan of that. The exclusives. I didn't know the the other ones were. All right, guys, I think it's time to do the sky thing in the background. So does anybody have any considerations? The oranges and reds will play really nice with the blue. What are you guys thinking? But I'm willing to try whatever you guys are, are, are liking. Um, a yellow could work, but it would definitely then... Uh, contrast against uh, Tim Curry's teeth but it would go well with the red a green I'm not feeling a green uh, same with the purple I don't want it to contrast with his or, or you know take away from there so if anybody has any suggestions let me know otherwise I think we're gonna go with the blue uh, we could do uh, mint blue is nice. That's okay. The light hydrangea, hydrangea is okay. Let's see robin's egg blue. It's even a little more blue. Dark blue. Let's give that a try. Let's see what I got here. So we have the d agate is a very dark blue. I don't know. I, I That might be a little too dark. A fade from one side to the other. Hmm. That could work. That could work. If we did dark blue over here. The dark blue goes great against the, um, the orange there. That's too blue. I don't like that. That's it's too too intense. Same with I think this iris color. Yeah, too intense. So I think we're gonna go from agate here over to the uh, mint blue. I don't know how that's gonna work. It's hard to do fades like from from that dark to that light. Okay, what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to use the mint blue on Tim Curry's side. And if we can get it to fade, we get it to fade. And if not, that's okay. Kevin, what's your Corgi's name? I love Corgi's. They have tiny, tiny legs. <laughs> that makes me so happy. And they're the official dog of the Queen of England. Of whom I am a fan. Madigan, nice. Oh, hello, CJ. How you doing? 
Yeah, it's definitely coming along. It's definitely coming along. So we are we are in it to win it, man. We're I'm sticking it through. We're getting the sucker done. So hopefully it won't take too long. I I suspect another 40 minutes probably. But either way, it's it's getting done. And of course, this marker is running out, which is just awesome news. So I need to refill this. So hang tight for one second. You guys get to watch the refill process. So ooh, lucky you. <laughs> Yes, yeah, CJ, it's a it's a two for one deal today. So hopefully it's still good and interesting. You guys got a, a beautiful pot of petunias and, and a whale and double clowns. So what a uh, what a thematically appropriate uh, <laughs> two for it's a two for Thursday. So basically to refill, we take the refill, we screw this ginormous needle onto it. So that's, that's the, uh, that right there is the, uh, blood drinking needle. And after we've taken the cap out, the, uh, the nib, it's inserted. Ooh. Yep. There we go. And you squeeze. There's lines here to measure how much you're squeezing. And then you can insert the nib. Cap it. And I give it a couple minutes just to set and run down all that ink, but that's that's it. So that's one of the reasons I like the um, Copic so much is the ability to do that. It's good. So, all right, let me grab a bit of water here and we'll finish coloring that in. Okie dokie. Kevin, you have no idea. You think your, um, what's it called, are, your Funko Pops are getting up there. <laughs> you have no idea about my marker obsession. But yeah, the needles are good for uh, inserting and, and, and getting them together and, you know, refilling. It's a handy system to have. Blessed Parsley, I will. That's a good idea. If anybody's coming in and they're like, uh, <laughs> they're like, oh, I'm here, just here for the Hitchhiker's Guide art. Boy, are they going to be surprised. I just like to think that somebody out there is a huge Hitchhikers fan. They see this and they have no idea what Stephen King's It is and they think it's Hitchhiker's Guide somehow. So they're like furiously going through their books trying to find the scene where the two clowns meet. Yeah, it was a good idea. I, I'm really enjoying this one. The Pennywise's was, was an excellent idea. So it would be nice. I, I wish all of this was, I was faster. I mean, I'm not too bad. I've gotten better than when I first started, but, uh, you know, I wish I could just do a, like a, like I could just do multiple things. You guys could just yell stuff out and I could just draw them, you know, kind of like what we did on Facebook that one time. 
But to do full marker drawings, it just takes too long to do. One of these days I might do like a, a charity type deal where it's like a, like a, I'll just draw, like I'll stream like all day, but you know, if people donate money to like a charity or something like that, I'll just like keep drawing or something like that. You know what I mean? Might be a good way to like fundraise for, for something. But uh, as it is, uh, you know, I, I wish I could do it for like the hurricane relief stuff, but as is, the schedule's just a little too full for that as right now. But maybe in the future. Yeah, I, I think I am just going to leave it the one blue. I think it's going to be too hard to, to, to blend it properly. I think the one thing I could do is just a little bit of like a... Just a tiny edge there, like that, and up here, you know. And then I can try to like smooth those out just a bit more, if that makes sense. So the next con I will be at, good question, uh, I will be at the Living Dead Festival in Evan City, Pennsylvania. And that is on um, October uh, 20th. 21st and 22nd. It's that weekend. So that's where I will be this year. It used to be a free show in the city. This year there's a $5 entrance fee, which isn't bad, but still. But uh, I recommend it. I it, it's geared. It's the Night of the Living Dead like fan festival, basically, and it's very geared towards that. But I always have a blast that show. Uh, it's outside. Evan City's really a scenic little town. And uh, you can go like up to the cemetery where they film scenes from Night of Living Dead. Uh, stuff like that. There's location tours in the town. Um, all kind of stuff like that. So it's, it's a lot of fun. And I really nailed this one. Thank you. Hey, CJ. Uh, yeah, Kevin, it's where it's filmed. But uh, CJ, there's this movie I have called Cellar Dweller, and it is about a, it's like an artist's, uh, not a halfway house, but like you're, you're as an artist, you're invited to go to this um, special like artist retreat. So they have like a comic book girl, they have a guy that does like, a, or a girl that does interpretive dance and like a mystery writer, like all these artists are there. And there's an old comic book drawn by Jeffrey Combs in the 50s called cellar dweller with his demon and it like the comic book comes to life and starts killing everybody it's uh pretty awesome so check that one out yeah the living dead festival in uh evan city pa in uh october it's a great show right before halloween now i was going to do goulardi fest which is in cleveland uh unfortunately just it's on it's over halloween weekend um, unfortunately, some personal things have come up that have prevented me from doing that. Plus, it's an expensive show, actually, so kind of save some bucks by not doing it, but maybe next year. All right, so we got to finish up here with a little bit of shading in the faces, and then we can get into the inking, which will be fun. Um, so I got to look up what Bill Skarsgård Pennywise's eye color is. And that's kind of hard to get. It's very desaturated. <laughs> So if anybody has seen the movie, if he has like yellow eyes or something like that, let me know. I think in this one picture he has yellow eyes. I see he has like yellowish teeth, so we're going to do that. But let me know. Let's do the buttercup yellow on the teeth. And we'll put in some dark here. And I'm going to shade his face, I think, with a, a green. Yeah, let's do greens. I have this BG10 Cool Shadow, which really works as a shading white a little bit. Plus, it gives kind of a... 
it, it looks not quite right. Like, it's good for a supernatural clown, if that makes any sense to anybody. But it does smear, which is no good. That's okay. That's okay. His eyes are green. Kevin, yeah, I bet watching on your laptop is better. Okay, so so green eyes. I gotta ask then too, like a bright, like a super bright, brilliant green, or like a dark, dark green. I'm gonna actually add that in here to the fingers too, a little bit of that green color. And down here, let's pick up anything that's like white, has a little bit of that green in it. Dark green. Okay, cool. Thank you, Blessed Parsley. I will get into that. No, that doesn't look so good there. And let's shade Tim Curry just a pinch. Okay, so I got our race. Because I want him to be white, white, white. Which is hard to do with all that pencil. This is one, normally with these marker drawings, I don't seal them afterwards, but with all this white space, this one's definitely going to need a spray of a sealer to keep it from smearing around anything. So before I ink, I want to make sure this is nice and all these pencil lines are as much of the graphite as I can get rid of. Got to get rid of it. It's easier to do it now. There we go. Okay, cool. So dark green eyes. We're going to use uh, ocean green. That sounds good. The ocean is a place of, of mystery and terror. So we're going to do that. Good deal. Okay, guys. I think we're ready for the inking stage. And we can wrap this beauty up. Oh, there we go. That's the ticket. Mm. So I wonder if I change the name in... Um, in YouTube. If it'll, like, save it immediately kind of a deal. You know what I mean? Oh, changes are being saved. There we go. Okay, cool. Alrighty. So I think I need a little more black here. This pot is just almost kicked, but I like to squeeze as much out of it as I can, you know, before switching to a new vial. This isn't expensive ink or anything, but... Waste not, want not, you know. Okay, so. We are good here. We're going to use our triple zero brush. I've been loving it recently. It's not it's not quite as thick as the other, the, the zero. So that's, that's a plus. We could start just putting in these... Uh, balloons here okay hopefully it looks as good as the hitchhikers one I'm actually really liking both of these I think they turned out pretty great today Not what I expected to be doing, but you know what? That's kind of the joy of these uh, live streams for me. Is they definitely offer some uh, interesting stuff. Okay, blessed parsley, no problem, no problem. Uh, if we're not, if we are not here, the stream will be up for you to take a look at, to watch the end of it on YouTube and Twitch. 
And I should have a recap video, too, up uh, probably either tonight or tomorrow. So thank you. And do I have any pets at home, Kevin? Yes, I have four guinea pigs. Four guinea pigs. I know you always had uh, guinea pigs. I love them. They're my favorite animal in the world. And, uh, you know, they're downstairs. I, I, I need to get one of them or a couple of them on video. So, you know what I mean? Somehow. But yeah, four four little guineas. They're good guys. They're a bunch of goofballs. All right, let's see his hair kind of swirls out and around. We can do that. We can do that. So you just have the one corgi then, Kevin? Corgis are awesome. Kevin, yeah. <laughs> Good luck with that. I wish I could hold them. <laughs> they... They, they are very squirmy, and they don't like to be held very much. <laughs> I I wish. <laughs> they, uh, they're good pigs, but damn, they, they're like, don't, don't, don't effing touch me, bro. <laughs> Lay off. Now, my brother has, I have male guinea pigs my uh, brother has female or a female now he had he used to have two but um they were a lot more docile and easier to handle than my guys i don't know it's hard honestly it's tough having so many of them males they tend to fight and bicker and stuff like that so we we try our best to keep the peace but it it's tough Yeah, I remember that. Uh, I remember that your your pigs uh, enjoyed being being held. Or did you have female pigs back in the day? I thought you had male pigs. I I can't remember. Old Pennywise goes to New Pennywise and says, I am your father. And New Pennywise goes, no. I know that's not the no that Luke says, but. Uh, that's a lie. That's impossible. I'm not entirely sure how his hair flows, but as long as I get it somewhat right, right? Oh, the last two you had were female. That's what I've heard. Females are easier, you know, they get along better and stuff, but more docile. I like our guys, though. They're good. But yeah, they... Yeah, sometimes I'm just like, I just want to pick you up because you would comfort me. And they're like, no, no dice, bro. Hands off. We're not that kind of, we're not that kind of guinea. Yeah, I'm definitely getting a passing the torch vibe off of this drawing, but in in a good way, I think. You know. Well, and I'm especially okay with it a little more uh knowing that the new it movie is good and that Pennywise in it is good, you know. So, let's see here. Here kind of swirls, kind of curls in. At least according to the reference I'm using, so. That's a lot of clowns. 
CJ, that is that that's a lot of clowns. <laughs> you know, I've done marker drawings at, at larger size too. I'm usually doing these five by sevens because they don't take as long. Like I can usually get one done in under two hours. But if I'm doing like a eleven by fourteen or an eight and a half, that gives so much space to work with. It just takes a lot longer. That might have been fun, though, doing something like that. I did a couple evil clowns last year for Drawloween. Yeah, you know what? You know what, Kevin? That's that's the chewy thing. Leia is Leia is racist against Wookies, and that's all there is to it. She didn't give Chewbacca a damn medal at the end of A New Hope. She didn't hug Chewbacca like, oh yeah, the guy you swore your life debt to that you let down by letting him die, technically. You know, she's like, I don't care, Chewie. I don't care about you. She is a Wookiee racist. There's hair back here. I'm going to kind of just darken it. Don't want you to see it too much. But yeah, clown, big old clown drawing would have been, would have been fun. All right, back to my reference of Pennywise. Oh, thank you. Thank you, CJ. I'm kind of doing a little bit. It's, I'm changing it up a little bit this year. I don't want it to just be the same opening year to year. Uh, but I'm not sure what I'm going to do. So if you have any suggestions, let me know. If you want to see like silent film clips from back in the day or just something wacky or different, let me know what your thoughts are. It's going to be the same similar type of thing, but just a little, a little pinch different, you know, this year, just to vary it up. Okay. Let's go this way. Boom. Boom. All right, let's get these eyes in. But yeah, CJ, I'm glad you like the Drawloween videos. I've already started just kind of getting the ducks in a row for that. Um, Drawloween, if you don't follow them on Facebook or Twitter or whatever, they've put out their calendar for this year. So if you go to like the on Facebook the Drawloween page, you can actually see what the calendar is going to look like for this year. So there's some interesting stuff. Ah, pardon me, interesting stuff on there. So um, check it out. Yeah, it's going to be a good one. Yeah, I like it too. It's just one of those that I, I don't want it to get stale. You know what I mean? Like I feel like every year if I'm doing something a little bit different, that'd be cool. Hello, Blessed Parsley. We are still in it to win it, my friend. We are drawing our hearts out here. Trying to get this thing done. Yeah. But yeah, I think it's going to be good. Yeah, maybe Universal Monsters would be good. I know I did the silent films last year. Well, I love silent films, but also because um, there's no risk. Like, they're in the public domain. You know what I mean? Nobody's going to have, like, a copyright claim against me for using it. Um, with the uh, with the Universal Monsters, maybe, but uh, I'll give it a try. I mean, what's, what's the worst that can happen? They say take it down, and then I just use the old intro, you know what I mean? Kevin, I do not have the Nosferatu pop. I want to get it. There's a lot that I, I really want to get that it's just uh, like a time, money, resources type of thing, you know? But I do not have the Nosferatu pop. I do not. I'd like to get it. I, I, there's a couple that uh, are out of, you know, not print, but just they're not making any more that I'd like to get. Like they have the from Fantasia, the Night on Bald Mountain. It's a Chernabog. 
I would dig that. And the, uh, like the creature from the Black Lagoon, all those guys. Oh, you can hear the guinea pigs. <laughs> wow, I did not think the microphone would uh, pick that up. They're downstairs. They are actually, they are actually not here. I, I'm on a completely different floor from them. My wife just walked in the door, so uh, the guinea pigs are going nuts because it's past uh, dinner time. Creepy music. I like it. I like it. That'll be a lot of fun. I don't know what I'm going to do. Something interesting. Go fix that. I don't want this to get too much here. Okay, there we go. What do you guys think of the Bill Skarsgård it face? That turn out, does it need anything else? I am unsure. I think it looks pretty good. Now, I've, again, I haven't seen the movie. I'm just going from like reference photos. So let's see here. He's got the ruffles around his hand. We'll do that. Yeah, I'm shocked. I am shocked that you were able to hear the guinea pigs. That's uh, our guy Fluff. He goes bananas when it's uh, when it's dinner time. Oh, thank you, Blessed Parsley. And he has a scaly scalp in the drawing. Okay, good. That's that's fine. Okay. Get this hand done. There we go. Okay, there we go. There we go. Nice. King Kong versus Godzilla. I don't know if I did a... I know I've done a King Kong versus Godzilla marker drawing before. But I don't know if I've ever done a video of it. But I feel like I just did a Godzilla. And I haven't actually... Bless the parts I have another one that's in the hopper ready to go. It's the, uh, like, 54 Godzilla. But yeah, at some point, one of these days, yeah, that sounds good. I don't know if it'll be next, though. But yeah, eventually I'd like to, well, I'd like to do all the kaiju monsters. Ghidorah and Mothra and all those guys. I guess I did Mothra just recently. But, you know, but thank you for the suggestion. I always appreciate the uh, suggestions, even if I can't get to, uh, to do them. I think what I'm going to do is like next week have like a little contest and uh not even a contest but just like you guys give me your suggestions kind of a deal and i put them in a hat and then we we draw because I, I like i like drawing what you guys want to see you know
Do the ruffles here. Ruffles have ridges. There we go. Da -da -da -da. Spooky clowns. King Kong is a giant grimace. I did not know that. The Grimace are noble peoples. Persecuted by the McDonald's for years. I always thought Grimace was the representation of the various uh, food poisonings you could get at McDonald's. I don't. I, I doubt that's true, but that's just in my mind. That's what a grimace always was. I've heard people say grimace was supposed to be a milkshake, but I've never had a purple milkshake at McDonald's. I wish they had purple milkshakes, but alas, they do not. All right, let's go back to the image here. Can't really do those poofy sleeves too well, like what we got. There's just not enough room, but I can do like that. Just to give you the impression that he's got poofy sleeves. There we go. And he's, of course, got the puffballs. There we go. How's that looking? Hi. Okay. And now we start to move into the Tim Curry portion of our broadcast. Was Grimace originally a bad guy? My God, I, I didn't know that. That that rocks my universe. I will check that out. I am very interested in the history of McDonald Land characters, like Birdie and the Hamburglar. Good call. Thank you. Did you hear Marie? Wow, you must. This mic must be super sensitive. She was just telling me it was after six o'clock. I had no idea that that would pick up. That's amazing. That is amazing. But yeah, she is right, though. I am going to have to wrap this up. I'm going to take it to the end. But we're not going to have too much time once it's uh, once I finish for like the, the wrap-up. But I'm definitely taking it all to the end, man. We're, we're, we're in this to win this, guys. And I'm taking you all with me. How do I feel about creepypastas? Uh, I like them. I have not read a ton of them, I'll tell you that. But I do like them. Uh, the Slender Man Marble Hornets. Years ago I watched it. And it was like one of the few things that's actually like made me sleep with the lights on for that night. I was so freaked out by it. But that's a good thing. Um, some creepypastas are really dumb that I've read. Like that one about the, uh, the, the guy that has to eat a desk. <laughs> I, I don't know, man. That's just not my cup of tea. But the, like the NES Godzilla creepypasta is really good. So I'm always interested too in uh, more things too. So if you guys have, if you have any other, other creepypastas, let me know, man, that you think are good. I also like, like the SCP Foundation. I love that kind of stuff. And how am I going to do the strings with a pen and a straight edge? Uh, yeah, Kevin, I think that's just honestly the easiest way to do it. 
you know, there's a technique like in the the how to draw Marvel comic books. Like Stan Lee talks about it. Well, Stan Lee wasn't the artist. He, you know, he's the author of the book. But I think it's John Romita, Senior or Junior. I can't remember. But he says you can do it with a ruler that you tip up on edge and like use your brush along. I've never gotten that to work right. It always ends up screwing up. So probably um, I thought about freehanding them too, just with the uh, just the brush, because that gives such a nice uh, line quality to it and can kind of skip in and out. But I think the pen's just going to be the easier thing to do. But we'll see. I haven't decided anything yet. When we get there, we get there, you know. NES Godzilla is my jam, too, by the way. Like, in terms of just the game, I know I, we were talking about the creepypasta, but uh, NES Godzilla is all right in my book. Jeff the Killer. I have not... Jeff the Killer, is that the one where it's like he's in the closet and he has this face and it's a creepy face thing? I haven't, like, read much about that. But Slender Man, I, I kind of dig Slender Man. So maybe we'll do Slender Man one of these times. But yeah, as I was saying, I, yeah, I think what I'm going to do is... Uh, can you guys, you guys can all contact me via social media like Facebook or YouTube or something like that. Um, and just let me know any suggestions you have. Keep it to like, like we'll say three suggestions. You know what I mean? Like if you want to see Jeff the Killer or, uh, you know, like Slender Man or King Vitamin, you know, like those are three suggestions and just let me know and I'll put them all in like a hat at the beginning of the episode and, and draw them out and we'll see what we get. Does that sound cool to everybody or does that sound like... Terrible, you just want me to pick something and draw it. Let, let me know. Because I like drawing what you guys want, but if you guys just want me to draw whatever the hell I want, then then that's fine too. Or we could do a uh, beginning of the chat type deal next week where people just say, like, draw this. And then I start drawing it and people can second it. Like, yes, you should draw that. Like, everybody seemed on board with Pennywise's, you know. So whatever, I just I just want to make the, this a good experience for uh, all you guys out there. And Slender Man is cool. He's pretty neat. Jeff was a teen who got burned and went crazy and carved a smile on his, I assume, face with a knife. Ooh. You know, if you can't smile on the inside, smile on the outside. And if you have trouble with that, yes, carving it with a knife would be... I wouldn't recommend it, but... <laughs> hey, everybody's got their own thing, you know. Alright, here's where we're going to add in those sharp, pointy teeth. I'll have to look into the Jeff the Killer thing. I've heard of that, but I I haven't read anything about it, so that's cool. Thank you, CJ. And Blessed Parsley, if that sounds cool, then, then great. It's nice that I can change the name of the stream while I'm streaming. So that helps too. So, you know, if I draw Slender Man out of the hat, then I can change it to that. So maybe people will like it.
They'll see Slender Man and go, I like Slender Man. Okay, let's add in the Tim Curry nose. His nose has nostril holes, which is fun. here with Tim Curry face. Oh, cool. CJ, thank you. I'll check that out. All right. So I need to see here the reference again real quick. Tim Curry, and I almost forgot he's got these kind of black lines under his eyes. Let's do that. That, okay, that is making me feel better. That's looking a little more Tim Curry-ish. There we go. Does he have it on the upper lids? Nope, just the bottom. And he's got those thick, like, painted on eyebrows. Let's do that. There we go. More. I'm glad I have this thinner brush for this kind of stuff. Okay, guys, what do you think of the face, the Tim Curry face? Is that uh, is that a little better? And walking a room with these two holy crypt keeper, you mean the two Pennywises? I would have a swell time. Tim Curry would give me a balloon. Ah. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, I was I was not I was a little worried about it to start, you know. But I think the ink went a long way to helping uh it look a little more like Tim Curry. Closer at least. Tim Curry enough for me. <laughs> All right. I will I will take it. I will take it. Okay, so let's get this hair started and he's got wild hair kind of sticks out how am I gonna do this this is gonna be this is gonna be something the ink did it yeah it usually does CJ, you know, that, that's one of the reasons I do the inking, like, like last. I feel like it really, it, it really brings out some of the, the details that the markers just, I mean, I guess they can, but with the time I have, I think that the markers don't necessarily uh, do it, but the ink usually helps. Sometimes I wonder why I do the ink last, though, but, you know, 
It's just just my process, I guess. Because sometimes it's like, how the heck am I going to do this? His hair is a little bit different, so... I'm just going to do my best with it. I don't know how the hair is going to turn out on, on Curry here, but... Let's get it going. I'll use the white highlighter too to add in some extra frizz. Oh, good! You could imagine where the where the ink's gonna go when the color good. Yeah, that's usually me. Like I'm I'm kind of seeing what I imagine in my head is the final drawing even before the ink is is there. So that helps me to guide where I'm putting it, but sometimes it's it's very difficult to do that, but sometimes it turns out like like I I'll, I'll say it guys, this one I think turned out pretty cool. This one I say that about all of them, but this one turned out good. So we're going to give it just a couple of seconds here to dry up so I can put in the balloon strings, which I'm, I was just so happy with the faces that I almost forgot about the balloon strings. So let me get out the uh, multi-liners here. We can wrap this sucker up. Yeah, blessed parsley. I, I like the I like the lack of colors in his outfit. It's like they didn't try to over they didn't try to top Kim Curry or anything. And I like that just that pop of orange and red that comes out. I think it's a really cool design. Okay, so we're gonna use the one, yeah, that should work. We we don't want the strings to be too pronounced, you know. Well, thank you, Kevin. I appreciate it. Just light, just enough so that the, the audience knows there are strings there. If that makes any sense to anybody but me. And then we're going to do a couple that are like balloons that are hidden in the back. Maybe you're not necessarily seeing them, the, the balloons that is but you can see that there are strings for them here. And we're gonna do another one, we'll do it over here. Thank you, Kevin, I appreciate it. Did I already say that? I, I can't, I can't even remember at this point. I'm going loopy, you guys, I'm going, I'm going absolutely loopy. Like Loop and Louie. Okay, Bless Parsley, we'll see you, man. Thanks again.
go. Ba -ba 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 -ba. I don't want it to cut into his face too much. That's enough. A couple more strings just to be there. One more over here we're going to do. All right, I think that looks pretty good. And let's do a couple easy peasy coming out the bottom here. All right, guys, it's, uh, oh, highlights, highlights, sorry. and just a little bit in his hair here. Okay. That is looking pretty good. Uh, there's like one or two little touch-up spots I just got to do real quick that I'm seeing. It's like mainly in these in this arm, these little green areas that need a dabble do you, you know. There we go. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm calling it. I'm calling it done. I've got to run. I think this turned out great. Eleven out of ten, and thank you guys. And I think I'm gonna be renting the mummy uh, this weekend, maybe tomorrow night. I, I don't know. We'll see. I don't know when I'll go see it. So. Uh, I'll actually sign it in white here. I'm looking for a good spot. Hmm. <laughs> How about we do it? How about we do it up here? How about up here this time? Something different. No, that's no good. <laughs> we'll do black and we'll do it here and that's too thick there we go perfect all right i'll get it scanned up and we'll have a recap video hopefully tomorrow so thank you guys so much for sticking around i know it was a long one uh, but i hope you all enjoyed this was a lot of fun for me and you know thank you guys i, I hope everybody had fun and enjoyed it I uh, think I'll probably get this up on uh, the Etsy shop probably by tomorrow if anybody's interested in it. If not, no big deal. You might see it at the uh, next convention in October. But either way, it was a blast to do. So, All right, guys. Thank you. And uh, we'll see you next Thursday. All right. Take care.